Hey, there we go. <laughs> oh, I was sitting here for like, <laughs> for like going like, oh, where's my, where's the mic? Where's the, it didn't kick in OBS. Okay, we're going to do another countdown. Three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. It is the BNR stream today on this fine 19th of August, 2024. I hope you're having a wonderful week and we'll have a wonderful week ahead of you. My week has been, uh, I, have I been seeing hectic every single week? Because it is still hectic. It's still hectic. But shout out. New South Wales, you've done it. You've now opened a wonderful metro line that I haven't ridden on uh, that goes between uh, Chatswood and Sydenham. Uh, it goes fast. So I hope all the trains can go fast, please, because it takes forever to go anywhere. Uh, let's jump it. <laughs> let's jump into the game. Oh, no, this is terrible. This is going to work. Okay, here we go. Uh, so this week, we've done... Last, oh, sorry, the last three weeks, we've done the Duke Nukem 3D Atomic Edition. The whole thing. Episode 1, 2, 3, 4. We're now going to go into the realm of the expansions. And the first one that people maybe miss on is... There we go. There we go. Cool. The first one we miss... Oh, sorry. The first one that we need to check out, which was released first, it looks like Duke Nukem 3D Atomic Edition. But this is Duke... Exclamation mark. Also, greetings, Bluff. How's it going? Long time no see. Uh, this is Duke! Exclamation mark. Zone. All caps. Two. Duke Zone 2 is the second Duke Zone. Uh, released by... Uh, what was it? Wizard Works? And uh, there's a d another developer name. I'm sorry. I know. Uh, but they went on to later create the, uh, the... The Christmas expansion for Duke Nukem 3D. But before they got there, they had Duke Zone, which was a terrible selection, not a terrible, but just a, you pulled 500 user maps probably off the internet, apparently. I don't know, I haven't really played it, and, and honestly, did anyone ever play through all 500 maps of Duke Zone? Who knows? Uh, they then went, oh snap, we need good quality, so we made a Duke Zone 2, which consisted of a bunch of levels they made. Each episode consists of uh, this time of day on a Monday. Congrats! Heck yeah! And it'll hopefully get better, not next month, but the month after when Daylight Savings kicks in. So uh, so they released an expansion called Duke Zone 2, or rather a, a second Duke Zone, uh, which contains not only the original levels, but also uh, three episodes, each consisting of five levels and two secret levels each. And uh, we're just going to dive into it. Uh, notoriously, the difficulty levels don't matter. The difficulty levels do not matter. So I'm going to say in the zone. Uh, all the difficulties are the same. There is a shotgun here, though. And you jump out of the helicopter, which it disappears, and then you gotta <laughs> make sure you land in the water. Uh, there's a lot of neat things in these levels, but they're also, um... No, you, you've probably seen better levels, in including in the actual game itself. Um... But I don't think these are, like, half terrible. Um, and I did some uh, pre-looking as well to try and go, okay, what were the expansions? What are the ones that I really want to be playing? And um, the long story short is uh, really just this, and then the other three, like, proper expansions we're going to play through. Um, and then we're going to finish off with the uh, 20th anniversary levels uh, that were released. So this might be another, you know, a fair bit of Duke Nukem to still get through. Uh, but certainly, I think this is, uh, quite the highlight of... Do, do you like that? Do you like that, like, level design? I just looked the wrong way twice. Um, <laughs> that, that one's on me, to be fair. But, um, uh, we're gonna see some quite exemplary level design going on here, where it's like, there's stuff happening. I've missed these sentries. Uh, if you go around... This room, by the way, is, uh, poison floor, or, or electric floor. Oh, dang it. Um, you can see your, uh, your boots going down over time. You need to be able to- oh, whoops. We're gonna need to go kind of quick. You gotta step in here. There's a pipe bomb here, which will allow you to then pipe bomb in there. Just gonna go quick. Oh, at least they give you the boots again. It's just annoying how long- how they just require to do all this. You know, take the electric boots and away you go. And then you've activated a switch which controls this door. Uh, but yeah, no, you'll see you'll see parts where it's like, oh, that's kind of neat. Like I got this bridge here. You know, things like that. But 
Um, you're also going to see, uh, oh boy, this is, uh, you know, things that are not the, um, not the nicest to players. Well, they throw a bunch of explosives here just to hide the key card, which you'll then need to turn around. We also have this little underwater bit. Sharks everywhere. Everyone likes killing sharks. Who apparently don't count towards the kill counter. We get a rocket launcher, because somehow we got all the way back here. Very nice. Uh, but yeah, no, I hope you all uh, at home are having a wonderful uh, week. Um, I got through a bunch of games this week, so um, I have quite a few uh, stories to talk about, uh, as well as also uh, a few other just kind of gaming-related things to mention. And oh my gosh, yes, gaming-related. I'm not even I'm not even going to chat about hardware too much because uh, there's not really any big news. It's mostly the. Uh, the rumor mills and the products that have come out and there's not much to really say about them so uh, that's all good uh, but I will say that uh, personally I am really looking into actually taking the plunge and getting some actual server uh, hardware like I'm going rack mounted finally I figured out how I'm gonna do it maybe we'll see there's probably some minor arts to server um, you know stuff but uh I'm just like, well, I have an ATX board, you can get cases that support ATX motherboards, and really I just need a bit more space than what I've got, so. Uh, some of these levels are going to be quite short as well, so my goal is we're going to do all, hopefully 21, in one stream. Come get some. So we're on to Slime Station now. The levels do, uh, I think I'll climb aboard. generally a bit longer than that one, but... Uh, this is, the, well, yeah, most of these levels are centered around the gimmick, and you'll see that gimmick, and then you'll be like, ah, oh, okay. Um. We're gonna just rock the hit scan. I love what they're doing here, but, uh, oh boy, is it kind of annoying, uh, to deal with these enemies just chilling up here. Oh, maybe when I knock them down, maybe it's a bit easier. Uh, your goal with the level is that there are two key cards, which are accessible on the... I, I, I sure hope someone was commenting on that aim right there, I was like, whoa. But you see how, like, man, you know, I'm taking damage and there's not a lot of health. There's your first aid, I might need that. Dang it. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, there's not a lot of health in the, this expansion, and uh, you're gonna eventually see <laughs> bit of a bit of a gut. Oh my gosh, bit of a gutsy jump in front of a moving train. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, are we on the right side to get this? Nope. Let's wait for the next one. Oh hi there, turret that's off in the far distance. Um, yeah, here we go. So if you try and jump on the front. Never mind. You need to actually, you'll, you'll spot there's a key card in the front of these train carriages. And the red one faces this way, the blue one faces the other side. So you have to somehow do a jump from another side. But I'm very, this is actually what they expect you to do. This is actually what they expect you to do. If you're doing this without, like, okay, we're in, we're in. Okay, okay. <laughs> um... But I swear, this is this is actually what uh what you're required to to pull off in order to you know, beat this level, which is uh quite a bit in, you know insane. The the catching up is quite nuts. Oh my gosh! I swear I've been beating the rest of the game on come get some. So okay, let's uh let's wait until the blue one comes around and then we'll do a. <laughs> okay, okay, uh. I'm not having good fun jumping on that. Let's just uh, waddle on over until we're sorted there. There we go. Is that the ideal location? Ooh, they're giving me the jetpack, so I'm doing better. I was doing better. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I'm so glad you're backing up that opinion. <laughs> or back, what was that? What's my claim? What's my original claim? I don't know. I'm rambling. See, the worst part as well is that you can't jump forward 
you can see I'm too slow to catch up to the platform again. So we'll just we'll just reload the save and we'll just get that jump right this time, I guess. But legit. best view. Oh my gosh, that's a slot machine link, right? What on earth? The gamblers are getting smarter now. They're, they're mixing up their messages. <laughs> oh. So, once you get both key cards, then all that's needed to do is to uh, get into that door. That. No, not that door. The. Oh. Okay, I'll just hop here. This door. It's opposite where we started. Uh, this one? Pretty sure it was this one. <laughs> that was a bit of a... <laughs> no, I'm very certain it's that door. What? How do we... How do we open the door? I'm missing a switch somewhere. I'm missing a switch. It's bound to exist somewhere. Just keep checking all the little hidey holes until eventually we spot it. Turns out I'm just gonna get every single secret, and we'll just, we'll just, you know, no secrets left to, left to discover. Okay, I'm sorry for quick saving, like, every, like, two seconds. Like, a very, very, uh, you know, like, what if I, what if I accidentally run into a train and die again? Uh, this is where we started. There's no mystery, we started here. And where where did the keys end up? Already, we're minutes in, we're getting confused by the level design. Oh sorry, it was just a little little side door over here. Okay, let's do it without the jetpack. Just uh yep, okay, they're around that side. See what I mean? Very easy to get turned around and lost here. And it's the next, next little jump over. There we go. We're back over here. We're back over here. We've done it. We've done it. We're all good. Um, so let's dive into uh, the handful of games that I played uh, or finished off this week. So first of all, I finished off Grid Legends. Finally, it's been like 10 months since I started it and I've been very on and off with other racing games because Grid Legends is a horrendously long game. Uh, so to do the brief summary, the game consists of two parts. There's a uh, story mode which has full motion video cutscenes with real life uh, actors. And uh, you play through a bunch of scenarios back to back. And I thought, oh, it's kind of okay. It's not like amazing, but it's, it's, it's alright. Oh, hi there. Nice enemy spawn. Very nice. Um, I was gonna say, is this like the, uh, the... What is this? The, is it the radioactive symbol? It's not quite, because it's got four, four lines off of it, but sure. You know, okay. Um... Oh. Hit the caps lock on that one. There we go. And then we're back to the train. Why are we back to the train? Did I... I was meant to activate something, or no? I think that switch may have activated the door. That's what I'm getting confused about. So if we go back to the start. Over there. There we go. Now the door's open. We can use the key cards. And you know what this means? Just, just bowl it. I don't care about fighting enemies. <laughs> Um, yeah, the scenario mode's alright. It'll probably take you about three hours or so, but it's okay. Third level, Cop City. There are indeed cops in this city. There he is. There's the cop. Everyone's favorite enemies that don't show up very much in the actual game. And also, also, uh... Centuries, why not? Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, the scenario mode in Grid Legends is alright. 
Uh, then the game basically goes, like, the whole point of the scenario mode is that you're, like, part of a team, you're working way up to win the Grid Legend Championships, and, you know, you're a small rookie team working your way, that kind of stuff. Um, a bit of drama ensues, one of your characters loses her leg, you know, it happens, that kind of stuff. They kind of, it's a PG rated game, they have to not do too much to... <laughs> this is very off screen, that kind of stuff, but oh, okay, sure. Um, okay, he threw the green at me. Um, this ledge, I don't know why it's. It, it doesn't quite render right, but okay. Let's do a prison break. It's more a prison entry, but sure. Uh, we've also got this little bit over here involved. Whoa. Come get some. Just casually crouch and you'll you'll be okay there, I guess. Um, let's see, we've got a force field on the police station. This part I don't like about this level. You've got these um oh, first aid there. Yeah, okay, there's a there's a boss of plaza and a half, ain't, ain't it? I mean at least it's like the easy guys, but still. Um eh. So it's kind of weird because it's like you go up to this wall and then it moves up. <laughs> then you can grab these uh, atomic health as well as also get shot by uh, two turrets. Not one, but two. We needed two. Uh, yeah, this is the part I don't like about this level. You got these like sewer grates and there's like three of them. It's like which one do you go down? I'm not sure off the top of my head. But you do have a switch. Also, this game's a bit dark. You're not gonna see like what's going on sometimes. Like here, it's like, oh my gosh. It's very dark. Uh so yeah, once you're done with the game, you basically go into your standard grid scenarios. Your standard grid scenarios involve, this is a class of cars, and uh, you're gonna drive a few races, and that's about it. Um, try to, you know, get the most points in the cup, and sometimes the cups are one race long, so it doesn't really, you know, doesn't really go far. Um, also, I believe there's a secret area, maybe not yet. We have a secret level exit in this level, and for some odd reason it kicks in before the, um, the actual level's exit, so you could potentially not quite know where the actual level ends. You just went straight for the secret exit, you know what I mean? Um, interestingly as well, this, uh, expansion that has, so each, uh, episode has five levels and two secret levels. The first episode, uh, one of the secret levels, just, there is no entrance to it. I'm gonna have to kick in with the console to access that. Um, also, uh, they designed this movie theater. Oh, we'll see in a moment. But uh, it's a it's a non Euclidean staircase for some reason. Like it seems all right. It's like oh, okay, you know, upper floor. But then on the other side is another staircase that also goes down. And in the map, it just clips into itself. Why they do that? I'm not too sure, but sure, okay. We've got that, uh, that picture that's always there, although there's no projector. It's just kind of here. I feel like I hear dudes behind it, but given the way that a lot of these maps have the sector over sectors, you never know quite where the sound's coming from anymore. So, uh, and yes, I have the yellow keycard, but where do you use the yellow keycard? We haven't yet, you know, gotten that solved. I'm glad I took a shotgun blast from both. Actually, I think the yellow, or first of all, there's that prize up there. Let's see if we can jump and get it. There we go. Cool. The shrinker, everyone's favorite weapon that I don't use enough. Um, but yeah, standard grid scenario mode. It's not too bad, but uh, the the way that it's structured is that you kind of you know you do a cup event and then you you know you may potentially win uh, a car in that class, but then you never really get to use that car again. Not a lot of the um. Yeah, not a lot of the, uh, the cars get to come back, and that's okay, I guess. Hello there. Just, just, you know, chilling. Oh, come on. <laughs> like, standing behind the door there. Oops, sorry. Time to lose all my health to everyone hiding behind a door. 
And that's fun. All the enemies spawn after getting the keycard. Well, that's gonna be fun, isn't it? Hail to the king, baby. Man, I need more armor again. Uh, but yeah. No, it's okay. Um, disappointingly, I got to the end of the game, and uh, you have to basically do every single event, and then you get to the, finally the grid gauntlet. You have basically a one race challenge on various various disciplines all over the place, and it's the same as before. And what do you get for beating the game? The same ungratuitous boot back to the main menu. Nothing fancy. Nothing special. It just it just goes. fun explosion. Also, hey, we're just here again. So this is what I mean by, like, uh, yeah, the secret level's just here. We haven't gotten any of the other key cards to view the end of the level, which is over there. Also, uh, hi, yeah, mini boss. why not? So, uh, just physically note that. Um, where do we put the blue key card? I think, uh, we've activated a switch that now opens the, the police precinct. And we can now start going in, I guess. Yeah. Oh, there he goes. Very big kaboom. Tiny little switch there. It, it's just very small for some reason. Nice. Nice. I'm so glad I just did that. I guess you need this tiny switch in order to even get in there, so... Uh, but yeah, no, it, it it ends very, you know, unceremoniously. You just kind of lead back to the main menu. It's a bit of a disappointing end to a game that's otherwise fairly alright. I like how we've got the mirror there. Um, actually, it's not even just a mirror. It's a, uh, I don't know, if you use a pipe bomb or explosive. It's a piece of wood, yet somehow on the other side, it is indeed a uh, one-way mirror? But it's wood on the other side. Also, there's a weird hitbox right here. And you're probably going to see uh, the Hall of Effects. The Hall of Mirrors effect. Uh, which is basically when the game... Alright, how... here's how rendering works. Rendering 101. Uh, bunches of uh, polygons are uh, um, computed in the camera space. This is called like the view model transformation, basically. Uh, just where are triangles, one in the world, and then where are you, and do the calculation, and that's it. Textures as well are just like a transformation of the texture object in that space. Uh, and it paints over the color buffer. Basically, what color is everything on your screen? If you don't manage to have a triangle on your screen, uh, what the game sometimes does is clears it to a hard color. But a lot of games realize, well, if I draw every single pixel all the time, then it should be fine. Uh, here's an example of, you know, whoops, we forgot to draw a texture. Because if there's no texture, the game probably assumes transparent. And uh, when you don't have a pixel behind it, you're basically not drawing the pixels below it. I'm actually kind of surprised the crosshair isn't one of them. I thought the crosshair would appear on... Uh, no, the crosshair is always in the same place on screen. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's go upstairs. <laughs> um... It's, it's, uh, it's not good to be seeing that, because uh, it sort of means that you haven't painted your world quite right. Look at this keycard chilling here. Oh my gosh. The enemy spawning behind you is, uh... I mean, it's it's kind of Doom-like, but it's like, oh... One thing Duke Nukem 3D did is that it had real good flow to the levels. Oh! Oh! Did I say real good flow to levels? Sorry. Um, that. By the way. Let's just go to the secret exit, because... Oh, sorry, I don't have enough health to drop down into the hole where the secret exit is. Sorry. Um, you're meant to drop down one of the holes and then you can use the red keycard to open the door. Spoilers, that's it. So, so the secret exit. Wherever it is. Wherever it is. There you go. It's just so weird. So like... Ugh. <laughs> this one's called a quickie. In a quickie, grab a shticky. 
I mean, based on the kill count, it's probably a quickie. I actually did play the same first episode just to, just to get an idea of uh, what I was in for. Um, because, uh, yeah, so there's this, which uh, technically is an expansion, but a lot of people forget about it. Um, but it is, it did come with the 3D Realms anthology. So I'd Ooh. count it as, like, it's official. Um, then there's uh, the next expansion, which we'll play next week, is uh, Duke It Out in DC. And then there's the Christmas expansion, and then the, uh, I forget the, the name of the Christmas one. Um, and then uh, the, uh, the Life's a Beach. Uh, Caribbean, Duke Caribbean uh, expansion. Um, I like, again, we've got a bit of non-Euclidean because the ceiling would probably be a bit higher than what the... Ooh, actually, maybe it works. Maybe it works okay. It's a bit of a weird kind of layout. And what's very odd is that you'll jump down into the water here. You'll go, okay, what do, what do I do? I gotta go around in the water. I'm crouching, hoping I can swim through the floor. But no... You, got it. you can go up here, something opens up, which is just really this wall, slightly, just to let you back in. Uh, so, okay, where do I go? you just meant to notice this, like, hole in the wall here, and then you kind of have to do a weird jump from here. Hold on, we'll give it another go. We'll give it another try. Once more with... Once more with feeling. You guess is as good as mine what happens to the music as well, but sure. Uh, yeah, um, mm, I can see what's going on. There's like a tiny ledge here, and then you turn around, and there's like another tiny ledge leading up to this door. Actually, can I even see the ledge from here, or no? It's a bit hard to see. Oh, right wall. Then you open the door, and you're immediately prompted with them, some enemies. I like this Mayan aesthetic they've got going on, um, but, uh, then they just dump you out in space, and, uh, you got, a uh, quite a bunch of enemies who just casually, you know, greet you. Okay. We're good there, we're good there. Uh, you've got a portal here, which just drops you back here for, you know, it's neat that it drops you back here, but I, you don't need to go back here. Um, and then uh, crouch through this tiny little corridor. We've got the... Nice. We've got a bunch of enemies all over the place here. Oh, hi there. Well, take two. Take two. Take two. There's not a lot of space to really be fighting them, ain't it? Um, I might as well just fin <laughs> finish up about the expansion. So, um... Uh, yeah, um, those all, all expansions, they all came out in 97. Um, I wasn't even shooting anything. Like, what, am, what, what do you do here? Maybe pick them off piece by piece. No, because you're stuck in a corridor and you're going to take a, take a rocket to the face. Okay, let's take one. And I've taken two. And I've taken three. This, wow, okay. It's a mean room, you'll see based on the layout, it's, like, really not easy to, to navigate. Just jumping all over the place. And then, super duper 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 mean as well. This ending here, with the, um, this, it's got a little force field over it, and the force field only goes away once all these enemies are defeated. have to just take them out, and they're all just, you know, they're gonna bounce in front of you, they're gonna launch the rockets everywhere, oh my gosh. The three mini-bosses, the three mini-boss, like, whatever the names are, the, the big dudes, just showing up at the, <laughs> like, after the police. So uh, that's um that's a perfect example of like the kind of difficulty this thing does. It's like they're meant to be like actually real proper mini bosses. Uh, Doom's a bit more generous because the enemies don't hit you very much. Like the the hits the hit scan enemies definitely do in Doom and in this game actually. The projectile ones mm, when you got a bit more you know space to work around in um it works out a bit more okay. But yeah here it's like ugh. The biggest enemies also has hit scan, and uh, 
When you have three of them, that's just like, hey, I'm getting pulverized. That's not fun, so... Um, oh, sorry, did I say you had to beat all the enemies? Sorry, I take it back. You don't have to beat all the enemies, you have to backtrack, and then notice that there's a giant switch on this wall. It's a bit cruel. It's a bit cruel. Um... But, uh, but yeah, uh, in researching other expansions, there's various other unofficial expansions. There's one called, uh, Duke It's Zero Hour. Uh, not to be confused with Duke Nukem Zero Hour, the actual, or, and Nintendo 64, uh, game. Also, this does not like activating, you have to <laughs> meander around it for a bit. Well, it was a quickie. Gonna rip on my new one. Time for some opening night, featuring everyone's favorite enemies. Who wants some? I'm glad they put a pipe bomb in the start. And they recess the manhole on the floor. Sure, yeah. Uh, a lot of the snow is, I mean, they kind of themed this around like air yeah, being snow, and I think this is an original snow texture, is it not? Imagine being in, like, New York and the in or Hollywood and, like, the whole ground is snow. It's like, oh, okay, sure. Um, given that they made the Christmas expansion, you could tell, uh, where they wanted to reuse their assets. That's a whole can of worms. Um, they uh, so that, uh, yeah, Duke, it's zero hour. They claim was going to be a paid expansion, but uh, it never seemed to manifest as that, so they just released it for free. Um, I've only played a couple of levels from it, and I'm like, mmm... It doesn't feel right to me. It's, it feels quite odd. Um, so I'm going to leave it out for the moment. Uh, there also exists the Duke Penthouse Magazine Special Level. This is an official special, just one level... Uh, you know, free uh, download actually, um, but it is official. It's officially licensed, um, which uh, I guess celebrates the Penthouse magazine, which is a um, an erotic magazine. Um, I'll just say that. Hi. Cool. I guess I got the RPG and then uh, teleport back. Okay. Cool. So I hit the switch, and I don't suppose there's another switch somewhere. I mean, that seems like a secret. I actually. Oh, that's a yellow key. So that's blue. Where does yellow go? Up here, I guess, yeah. Um, I'm not playing the Penthouse Magazine uh, level on stream. Let's just say that. It's uh, it's not safe for me to, to play on stream. You can freely download it, but just note, there's, uh, there, yeah, there's, um, there's breasts and, uh, <laughs> And I know, I know, I was like, oh, like, haven't you already shown stuff? As in, it's a real person. It's a real person who probably did, you know, work from uh, Penthouse Magazine. Uh, this parental lock, don't, don't do anything on that. I can't do anything other than edit the heck out of that video if I show that level. Let's, uh, just play it yourself. It's, it's fine. But, uh, yeah, no. Not for Twitch. Not for Twitch. Um, and, uh, we're kind of... That's it, really. So we've got this, the three expansions, and then the 20th anniversary levels. What is happening here? Strange. Okay. I guess that's a out of order door, and this just leads me. Huh. <laughs> oh, hi there. If only they self damage themselves up. So. Uh, and that gets to also, um, the Penthouse level ha came out much later, because it's got ads for Shadow Warrior in it. And I believe Shadow Warrior is, like, Shadow Warrior is a bit of a, you know, it's a bit of a violent game. It's got the blood and guts, but I think it's a relatively tame game. <laughs> Duke, uh, oh my god, jeez. Why? 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 Why did they do that to me? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my gosh. Hold on. Why? No, re legit, why? Hold on. Where's the trigger? I think the trigger is the top step. Yeah. What? <laughs> That's just bait. That's just bait. Oh. Why? <laughs> why would you do that? Um, okay. This seems odd. I got, you know, I got up here. I got to open this door. That doesn't seem to go anywhere, but... 
remember when I said I tested these, or I played through these levels, and it's like, how much of it do I remember? Um, this is where I started, because we're down here, so... It feels like I needed to pick up a red keycard from somewhere. So, um, but yeah, uh, I hope that's a good cover of, uh, what exactly Duke Nukem is about. Um, uh, this is certainly the bad. I think these will probably, I don't even know, actually. Some people might argue that the Christmas, uh, levels may be worse. I don't suppose you, you don't jump at the wall. You don't jump over the fence, because we were there anyways. Oh, you do jump through the wall. Of course. Ah, uh, you see? It, it's it's fine. You just had to guess that you jumped on the wall. Also, that's a secret in there. Okay, sure. <laughs> um, hey, at least, you know, spawning enemies back in existing areas, I think it's a, a, that's an actual good practice. Uh, it's a bit annoying when they spawn behind you. Like, directly behind you, like they did in the other levels, but... You know, I'm, I'm okay with like, oh, you know, you gotta walk around back to you. But they're like, come on, in that case, it's like, that's an enemy above, that's an enemy below, two enemies below. It's just like, come on, guys. Come on. Well, in we... Oh, sorry. Sorry. Did I say open the door? I meant this rock texture wall building. No, 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 you don't, you don't open the door. Can we jump to the window? We can. There are a lot of good vibrations going on. Um, but yeah. Grid Legends, <laughs> back to the start. Grid Legends, eh, it's, uh, it's alright. Um, it's not that offensively bad, actually. I, I think the, the driving model is quite fun to work with. Um, uh, it's a very unrewarding game. You sort of just have to be, you know, you're playing it for an average driving game. Don't play it to 100. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. What was that? I think I got hit by the door. Like the door counted as basically the train. Hold on, I'm gonna try that again. Yikes. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. Oh no. Oh. I'm gonna load that again. Hold on. I'm gonna watch the map as we hit E and you're gonna see it in action. Yeah. Oh. Oh. That, that hurts. That hurts to look at. I wonder actually if it works if I interact with it the other way. Like it's just panicking. No, no. They didn't play test the level. That's just, that's just disappointing. What was that one meme of the person who, like, drew, like, a spiky, like, monster to, like, represent his, like, sleep paralysis or his depression or something like that? And then a lot of people memed on that. That's like a, like an edit kind of, you know, <laughs> exploitative image. I'm hearing some wonderful sounds behind that door, though. At least that door works. Come on, by the way, come on, another one? This is just, this is just for show, this wall, oh my gosh. This level design's a bit of a meme, I hope you appreciate it, but like... I was gonna say, can the big guy see me from up there? Come on, check it out. Red keycard, right there. I guess he could see it, he can't... He's not interacting yet. I consider that a win. Oh, now he's interacting. But they did chuck me boots and health up here, so maybe I can use this to make my clean getaway. Clean getaway. We'll just we'll just go this way again. <laughs> See you, guy. Don't want to be you, guy. 
Alright, uh, let's just get out of here, because the red keycard door was all the way back out where the enemies are chilling now. And there we go. Oh, what happened there? Exploded hard. Okay then. <laughs> Here we go. The worst enemy, the turret. It's a bit of a cheeky spot, but sure. Alright, we've got one last level of the first episode, and then we're done skis with the first episode. Oh, I guess I need to go back, but... I think this is taking all my time from the actual first episode when I played it, as well. Um, alright. Uh, let's see. Oh boy, what are we in for here? Uh, next game I want to talk about is uh, Super Mario Brothers Wonder. Super Mario Brothers Wonder, I liked a fair bit, but I do not think it would count as a game of the year for me. Um, just because I like other games more. Not that it necessarily does anything that bad, and... Ugh. Um, oh yeah, this one. I remember seeing like this one discussed, and it's like, yeah, it's actually a kind of neat idea it's like a bunch of rooftops and you definitely fall down a ton if you if you drop so you basically got to just run and jump the rooftops and then immediately get ambushed by 50 million enemies all right well that guy's going um super mario brothers wonder uh yeah it, i would basically just call it um a very well executed but iterative mario 2d mario game um the gimmick with this one is that every level can, contains a Wonder Flower. The Wonder Flower uh, spices up the level, uh, does some wacky mechanics, and uh, in fact introduces its own kinds of mechanics on top of the wacky mechanics of the level already. It's a nice kind of way to mix and match the level and give it a bit of extra, you know, pizzazz to, you know, what's going on normally. Um, and uh, I like it, it's pretty cool. Um, I like how you have to do that in order to get the Wonder Seed, and you also get a Wonder Seed for beating the levels. So, you know, you're double incentivized to do these special challenges, and you need so many Wonder Seeds in order to unlock levels, so... There you go, I like the incentive. Uh, every level also contains 10 purple... <laughs> purple... 10 coin, purple coin, coins. Final 10. Uh, also, hit the top of uh, every flagpole, because eventually the game's gonna tell you off that you haven't done all of them so you can't access the super duper secret level at the end. Okay, sure. Uh, did he spawn behind me, that guy? I don't think it was there before, but okay. I'm gonna break your priceless artifacts. Um, but yeah, visually it's good fun. The music is real top shelf as well. They seem to be doing a great job. Um, but yeah, like my kind of gripes just go, mm, it is just a 2D Mario. Like at the end of the day, I've been there, done that, with a 2D... Not done that, necessarily, but... I, it's not... Like, if you've played other 2D Marios, like Mario, um... You know, New Super Mario Brothers, I think you'll definitely feel, hey, I've, I'm, I'm good at this. I've done this before. Um, that's fine, but yeah, yeah, I... Uh, that's all I can really say about that. Um, otherwise, though, everything else it does is really, really good. And... Uh, yeah. Best I could just say is iterative. It's like, yeah, it's a game I've played already. How do you? Oh, they just want you to jump back to the start of the level. Or at least around this corner and go back up the lift. Okay. I like how this uh, totally is a, again, non-Euclidean. This lift does not line up quite with the uh, original lift. They did not want to do a room over room on this part. Actually, you could get away with not doing a room over room if you just moved it over a little bit. <laughs> okay. Look at this, uh, enemy spawning. It's kind of hard to line these up, isn't it? Here we go. Um, but yeah, I don't want to rip on Mario Wonder too much. Uh, and I think definitely... If you haven't played a lot of Mario uh, games or other 2D platformers in particular, I think Rayman Legends is my prime example of. Play Rayman Legends, you'll see what I mean. Rayman Legends, 
also does a lot of the cool things that Mario Wonder did. And that game came out in 2013. It doesn't, it doesn't mean Mario Wonder is bad for doing that, but rather, <clears throat> there's other games that are cool just like that. Um, and I'm glad Mario is going down this route, because, uh, nice by the way, I love lifts that just lead you into forced encounters, very nice. Um, oh, I think it's good that Mario Wonder is doing these kinds of things, um, it still has lives, still got that going on. Um, but there's, yeah, there's lots of fun, wacky level designs, and I'm re I really do enjoy that nearly every level introduces its own kind of mechanic. And uh, pretty much every level's difficulty just comes from how hard is it to juggle that mechanic. Um, and then obviously you've got kind of remix style levels and things like that. Um, but yeah, other than that, not much to say on Mario Wonder, which um, yeah, I was kind of surprised about. I saw it kind of praised quite a lot before I- what did I take damage from, apparently? Um, I saw it praised a lot before I started playing it, but I think it's, uh, either it's getting praised just because, you know, I, I think the people reviewing or praising haven't played as many other 2D platformers, um, maybe? I don't know, that's my opinion. Or, uh, it's a bit of a, you know, a dry year. Like, is Mario Wonder just, you know, the fourth best game of the year because there's not that many other amazing games to cite? Potentially. This is just mean as well because the kill count keeps going up. Hi there, by the way. I hate these turrets, oh my gosh. All these enemies are just wastes of my ammo. Mm. Oh. Oh. That was, uh, all me. All painful. Groovy. At least there's health Groovy. and pipe bombs in here, which I should be using more of. Wow, pipe bomb. Uh, yes, by the way, I do have the, uh, jetpack, and I could potentially just break this level insanely. Nothing stops you from breaking every level with the jetpack. Um, but yeah, no, I think I was pretty alright, so... Uh, let's, uh, let's dive into the bad. We did the mid, the good, and now the bad games. Uh, game number three I played this week, uh, was, uh... Fast and Furious Crossroads. Fast and Furious Crossroads, speaking of Game Awards. Fast and Furious Crossroads got, uh, a, uh, a little bit of, uh, stage time with two of the actors from the movies, um, uh, coming up on stage and saying, you know, they were gamers, and it's so cool that they've now got a Fast and Furious game. Have you already had a Fast and Furious game? I feel like it was a mobile game, if that counted. Um, but, uh, no, this is their big, big AAA game. Um, it is a Shocking, shocking release. Absolutely shocking. And I can describe it, but I think also I'm going to leave it for a potential future stream, the specifics. Um, not soon, but maybe. Maybe at some point. Uh, where does this go? Does this warp across? Because this is a secret. That's a secret. Yeah, okay. Very nice. And then we got this, my favorite enemy, again. Um, but yeah, uh, how to describe it? A lot of people say it looks like a PS2 game. I think that's mm, maybe a bit ungenerous. But it does look like an early PS3 game. Uh, definitely the textures and the models are a bit higher quality, but there's just something odd. Did they just put explosive barrels right up above these trees as well? Okay. Interesting go. Hold on, check this out. Whoops. Eh. Eh. It's really not worth it, is it? <laughs> There's a lot of stuff here. I'm expecting something to show up. At least they give me tons of ammo right now. Uh, but 
Yeah, it, it doesn't look amazing. The voice acting is quite horrendous. Even with... Oh, by the way, so... Despite being Fast and Furious, you follow two characters who are not at all from Fast and Furious. Uh, but co coincidentally, one of them knows Letty. Therefore, it's uh, it's okay. They can easily just connect back to Fast and Furious. Uh, she shows up quite a fair bit. Vin Diesel then shows up when she shows up sometimes. Um, but uh, he's not in a lot of it. And Roman shows up uh, a bit. Also doesn't have a lot of screen time but okay like he's there no other person from fast and furious is in this game uh you still follow these other characters quite a fair bit none of the villains uh from the movies uh, show up um various characters get mentioned but never show up uh they for example they mention tej a fair bit they mention um brian once at the very beginning uh mia never gets mentioned at all despite inexplicably becoming a, a main character in uh, Fast 9, which was not out by the time this uh, movie came out, I guess. Also, this game... I was a pro dodging on my end. I hope you appreciate that one. Um, but yeah. how do? We, what about when we get into the game? Well, the whole game consists of a story mode. Only a story mode. There's a multiplayer component, but... What is going on up here? Oh my gosh. Jeez. Uh, that is one. Oh my gosh, hold on. Wow. Wow. Hold on. Watch the kill counter go up from 140 to. Uh, what number? What number are we about to go to? I'm, I'm guessing 153. Uh, 162. Like, what is this? What is this? Oops. Just, just let me leave. Let me leave. What's up here? Oh, and uh, by the way, I hope you were getting those key cards. Which may I add, you have to stop and interact with. go and uh what have we got on the inside oh you know a uh boss who's a stuck oh. it's just a man that's a bit of enemy spam ain't it you can't exactly step too far away from this guy We do have the Devastator, and not the Freeze Thrower, <laughs> now I'm thinking about it, it's like, yeah, there's no Freeze Thrower. Yeah, he is just stuck in there, he can't leave. I'm so glad they put health where he is as well. Is this an e problem, or a... Oh, it's doing so well. Um, so, yeah, so what does the game consist of? Yeah, a three-hour story and no extra side modes. Um, the three-hour story consists of sitting at a, uh, in a cutscene about people talking. The cutscene is full-motion video, but it doesn't hide loading screens. There are still loading screens after some of the missions, uh, if they take place in a different location. All the missions probably take place... I like how one of the stray misses every time gets me. Um... It takes place in a, yeah, a couple of locations, but uh, all of them kind of feel the same. Like, there's not really much going on uh, in them. Uh, a lot of the missions consist of driving from point A to point B. Sometimes there's a time limit, sometimes you have to bump people using the hilarious side uh, dashing, using a le left trigger and a left button and right button. Um, I don't suppose you can shrink them, can you? I got a Devastator, don't I? There it is. Hey, Gary had a lot of health, didn't he? Well, that's it. That's the whole first episode. And then we get the same cutscene that we had before, basically. Uh, let's do 
the bonus level, the other bonus level, which, uh, yeah, I'm gonna need to... I like how the font's different, and I also like how, uh... <laughs> I wanted to launch it like that, but I guess we're gonna have to go by user map. Uh, what would you say? L7? Is that it? Four-way stop. Yeah, this is level. Oh, hi! They're massive, oh my gosh. What is going on here? Hail to the king, baby. Why are they massive? Oh, good thing they didn't program, you know, a fairly say it. Yeah, there's this whole just extra level, and they forgot to put a secret exit to leave here. Wow. By the way, just lots and lots of, and lots and lots of ammo now. Is that a coloring thing? He looked like he had a black jacket. I think it is a coloring thing. Well, at least we've got some pistol ammo now, finally. Again. Um... Uh, sure, yeah. Secret jetpack, hide my field. What is, what is the infatuation with those kinds of enemies? I don't know why these guys are, the colors are all weird. Huh, strange. You seen that? Yeah. Is, is my goal to defeat that one guy who's gonna absolutely terrorize me at the top of the level? Sure. Um, <laughs> the car controls in a um, in a Fast and Furious Crossroads is dreadful. It's so slidey, so slippery. You sort of feel like you're being forced into like a cool, you know, movie drift all the time. But then sometimes they just want you to do a tight corner, and it's like, eh, nah. No, it ain't happening like that. But that's okay, because um, the game has such generous time limits and such generous health amounts. I rarely died, and when it did, it was because of a glitch, where the game progress just wouldn't kick in. I did the mission objective and then decided, ah, I'm gonna hold you on until basically the, the time limit kicks in. Why put doors down here if they don't open up? And also, sure that doesn't open. Okay, we still got more goodies. Come get uh, desert area. Okay. Oh, hi. Oh. Oh. I'm a happy chappy. I don't know what's... What, what is going on here? Come on, guys. Come on, guys. None of those were useful. They really did just put in like. Come on, come on! Don't, don't have me walking into walls to try and fight enemies. What the? No way! You didn't put specters in your in your Duke Nukem game. No! That had to just be a trick of the light, right? I think they're actually Spectres. Oh, but I can see that guy. Hold on. Ow. What the? They're being mean again. They're being mean again. I don't like it. <laughs> Uh, so, okay, why am I up here? I hit a switch, I guess. I like this building, though. I did something right. Lots and lots of buildings. Not a lot of, uh, flow, I guess. Just kind of, it's a bunch of buildings. 
It's a very, there's lots and lots of 90 shooters, um, like ones that probably, you know, if you don't know that many 90 shooters, you're probably never gonna have heard of some of these. Um, but they're all, like, oh, there's a lot where it's like, oh, we tried making a city, and it's just like, building spam. Oh, hi there. There's a lot of building spam, there's a lot of just like, look around, try to find the, is this a hole? Nice. That's cool. Was I out there or no? I don't think I was out there. I want to get him with the shrink ray. Come on. I heard the sound. I think I got someone else. You can barely see him. And you still gotta, <laughs> you gotta run off your luck again. It ain't happening at that door, I'll tell ya. Oh, he's just down here anyways. Alright, I think we gotta get past him. Alright, well there's goodies and... ...ammo down there. I think we can just leave it at that, really. I don't know what's up with the coloring on them. They just seem very odd right now. Is that just so they could have the invisible enemies? Uh, I guess this is as good as mine, what that... What all these switches really mean. Oh, hi there. Where did he come from? Alright, uh, have I gone into every building? Not the start building. Not where the one where this guy's on. If this just so happens to go up anywhere. Let's see. This weapon just does not do what you want it to. Well, I'm not going to do it after losing all my health, am I? He's just chilling. I mean, they give you all the shrink ray ammo right here as well, but like, look at this. I'm pretty sure it's a chance when you hit him. Uh, whether it goes off. Oh, what was... What? And he also blows up. Why not? <sighs> Here's a question. Uh, did they design the secret level to also not have an exit? I'm curious if that's the case. Because I'm activating all these switches, but... I don't feel any, like... Particular goal. You know, with this level, like... I don't know what exactly stops me from going through all these buildings and... You know, we've been in... Oh, hi there. Again. That's where I started. Okay. We went on top and... We've been in here. That's the jail. And this is where this one guy's just chilling. I don't suppose killing them, they've programmed that again, have they? Yeah, oh, oh, look, an exit. Well, I think I've got to activate another button somewhere. Okay, um, look for random buttons around the map that I haven't activated. That's, uh, that's a joyous level design right there. Shadow Legends Bunker. Is this the last switch? Uh, yeah, there we go. Look at that. And we just have the end crit. <laughs> what is going on here? Okay. There you go. There you go. Secret level done. And then we just casually load into other used maps. So, okay, sure. To the next... Uh, episode, The Alien Go Abbey. We start off in the graveyard shift. There's apparently a secret exit in this level. Who wants some?
And at this point, I only know these levels off the top of my head. I haven't actually uh, played them recently. I like this setting. It's nice. You've got your little cross going on. You've got your tombstones. Lots and lots of uh, centuries. Nice. Um, now, is there anything else to say about Fast and Furious Crossroads? It's buggy ass. It's real buggy. And it feels so sloppy. And it feels like it lacked a, a playtest. They sort of just had, you know, nine months make a game. And it's like, yep, that's it. We wrote it. We acted it. We had gameplay that wasn't really that attached to the story in any way, really. It's just, we need characters. Nice, by the way. These are just the hands. These are, like, you know, the Duke hands of the sprites. And that's just the Doom Guy sprite again. Okay. Um, yeah, no, it's it's shocking. It's it's like, oh my gosh. Okay, so. Um, yeah, uh, I would say keep clear of the game, but uh, apparently it sold abysmally at the time. Probably because a lot of people saw exactly what it was, and then went, nah, nah. Um, also, I feel like it's a relic of a time long gone. Like, the whole, um... What the? Oh, hi. Uh, the, the whole, um, like, movie tie-in really died out ages ago, and I think, uh... This is kind of exactly why. They, uh, people are like, oh, I, or I think studios probably give the, give the developers so little time to make a, a movie tie-in game, and in the past that worked okay. In the now... Mm. Oh boy. I love the enemy behind the dark corner. Um, but yeah, nowadays that's like, uh... You wouldn't be caught dead doing that, that's never gonna work out. And yet, and yet, they tried. They tried so not very hard with this one. Um, and the worst part as well is that I'm complaining about the story. It has a multiplayer component that isn't available anymore. And the game itself isn't available to buy. So that multiplayer component doesn't matter. The, uh, the single player, I mean, it, it literally is a story mode with a chapter select. There's no additional objectives. There's no additional... Um, like, you know, goals or side cuts or whatever. Um, it is literally a story. And that's it. Like this little casket here. Very nice. Shark. Shark. Who put, okay, who put a turret right here? This is such a strange little room, but okay. I'm not gonna pipe on the shark, that's a bit excessive. Alright, hold on, hold on, need to breathe, need to breathe, need to breathe. There we go, we're good. That's all the breathing you need, right? Just like, whew. Oh. Alright, so with that, I think we can now flick a switch. Oh my gosh. Hey, what? What just hit me then? Just an odd slope, I guess. Sort of fun explosion would be good, okay. Also, did that just close back up? You gotta hit the switch for a limited amount of time. Yeah, totally. Come on, guys, come on. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Yeah, I, I read up about this and I was like, oh, there's a fake floor right everywhere. And you just gotta jump. And then that opens the, uh, no, up here, I guess. I have. Oh, that's a good sound. That's also a good sound, and I'm just gonna casually jump back. And we're gonna try and get these boys with a good old fashioned. There's, there's nothing I can do. There's 
nothing I can do against them. Uh, fun fact as well, you need these uh, these bins here to jump up into this uh, this doorway. And then uh, I think you need a return here after hitting some switches for the secret level to open up. Alright, we got a rocket launcher, so that's all good. And he's wearing red! What's going on? Hi there. there we oh, we got a second one. We got a second one. It's the same bot. It's the same. It's the same link. Uh, is this wall blow up or no? They're just indicating you can kind of jump at this wall. Okay. Look at this big switch. That's a good sound, ain't it? What is with the, 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 like, the spam bots, I swear. And, um, Twitch, by the way, Twitch announced a new feature where, uh, if you have copywritten music on your stream, they're gonna do the whole YouTube approach of strike your channel before you can actually say, uh, uh like, it wasn't really for that. Um, and then, yeah, if you get enough, uh, music strikes, they just blow your channel away. Which is, uh, a bit unfortunate and a bit sad. This seems like the regular exit. Yeah, that's the regular exit. And there's a secret exit somewhere as well. Where do you think the secret exit would be? Let's see, we're back in the water. Um, well, we're stuck here, so... Can I no-clip? I, I don't know what's with the, uh, the console, like, not allowing me to type in it. Because you can see, uh, very tiny on screen. There's a little shift icon there. What is going on up there? Is it because I've been hitting F8 all the time? Or F7? Or F6? Who knows? Because I really want to type no clip. Um, but uh, okay, so in that case, uh, where do you think the uh, secret exit could be? Hmm. Because this kind of looks like a door. It looks like it could just go back somewhere else. Uh, Alright, I'm going to quickly reboot the game just so that we can uh, get the uh, get the no-clip working. So give me a hot second. I love, I love... I don't know what's up with that. I don't know what's up with the... The, um... The thing. Oh, I, I, I love how it's like... Uh, sometimes I kick in with the intermission, sometimes it's just like, eh, just reboot in. Oh look, now I can type in the chat. Alright, let's do the classic, uh, no clip to find the secret exit. And give myself God as well, just so I don't... Where are we, where are we looking for it? We've got this little tiny room, we've got, uh... This seems promising, this, uh, bit here. Maybe? No, that was, nah, that was always closed off. Uh, and that lead- this leads into that never went anywhere, so okay, we're all- I'm pretty s checked out in this room. I don't think there's anything to- oh! Jump through the ceiling, I guess. Perhaps there's something here? Nah, I think that's just the cross they're trying to draw. This one's a wall, but mm, seems alright. This is such a weird effect. This is how, I don't know, this is how you kind of break maps and try to find secret areas. It's just no clip. Try and spot them and then see if you can reverse engineer the, the secret area. I'm not going to spend too long. If I can't figure it out, uh, uh, we'll, just, we'll just boot the secret area. That is a weird spike. We'll just boot the secret area from the level select otherwise, but... How odd. Okay, uh, not up here. And we've got our little tunnel here, which, you know, has a little entrance here. Got this, ugh.
I don't see there, see there being any potential for a random doorway to kick in here. No. Your guess is as good as mine where that secret area is. This is the end area. We'll just give this a once perusal. Potentially you might be able to hide it in here, but... I don't spot it. And I spot, like, this death trap over here. And this outdoor area, which clearly, clearly they don't expect you to go in. Hmm. And then we have this room, which is right where I was. And behind, it was behind the toilet. Okay. How do you get in behind the toilet? I've used the toilet. I'm hitting the mash, I'm mashing the interact key. I shoot the wall behind it. Uh... Bit of a weird effect going on there. Um, no idea. No idea. We'll just continue like nothing happened. Okay, so clipping is on. We're just gonna do a secret level. Come get some. Listen, I did. I didn't say this expansion was particularly in my my forte. It's also not crazy documented, like the, um, the Duke wiki has a lot of, like, you know, stuff on, uh, each level in the game, all the secret areas, uh, stuff like that. Not a lot of people particularly note Duke's own, uh, the levels, the wiki just says which levels lead to other levels, including the lack of exit in episode one that goes to the other secret level. What are we dealing with on this level? Because currently we've got a bit of a wide battle uh, battleground, battlefield, and uh, it's another wide room. We just want a, a level filled with wide rooms. Maybe that was the gist. Okay. Well, with that, let's uh, talk about uh, game number four. I beat four games over this weekend. I count that as a big success, even if uh, Rayman. Um, Rayman? Oh, Mario Wonder and uh, Grid Legends were a long time coming. Um, and the last one was a very short one. I like how that went down for a hot second. Uh, the last one was uh, Lilo and Stitch 2 on the GBA. There's not much to say um, about why or what this is, although I don't think it's directly tied to a movie. It kind of feels like it's just based on the TV show, because it's got a bunch of monsters that may, I think, Particularly from the TV show, and uh, your villain's Hamster Veal, and I know he's the villain on the TV show. Gantu shows up for like a hot second, but he's not in much of it. Um, but uh, interestingly, you've got a range of gameplay modes, depending on you know the kind of you know the level you're in. So you start off with Stitch, and it plays a lot like Earthbound. Earthbound. Oh my gosh, I can speak. I'm, I'm mixing up my words so much. It plays a lot like Earthworm Jim. If you played like Earthbound, you'd be very surprised. Uh, Plays like Earthworm Jim. You run and gun, you can aim in uh, eight directions and uh, shoot your blasters as much as you want, really. They don't even have an ammo limit. You can just go for it. Uh, there's uh, special power ups as well, so you can uh, you know, shoot faster, or sometimes you can shoot these like homing shots and just. There's a lot of bullet spam. There's a lot of like you just shooting a ton of stuff. Um, the enemies don't shoot a ton, but they can. Uh, ouch. Uh, they can. And. Uh, but you've got a pretty generous amount of health for, uh, you know, how much, uh, <laughs> you know, times the enemy shoot. I'm not hating this level, by the way. It's, it's actually pretty okay. This is a bit of a... They don't want me to walk very fast because otherwise there's going to be more enemies ahead. And there's uh, that. That's a bit cruel. Because these guys don't care how far away you are, they're gonna hit you. That's a bit mean. Look at this guy chilling up there. And I guess I do have a jetpack. I... In 
theory I could jump up to these uh, insanely high ledges. That's just that's just poop. And same with that. Sometimes you can swim in it, but not now. Ow, ow, ow. No one saw that. No one saw that. Um, so you got that. Uh, then it kicks in with the Lilo levels. And the Lilo levels are all puzzle. Oh my gosh. The Lilo levels are all puzzle based. She can't really, you know, run, jump high. She doesn't have any attacks. But what uh, she can do is that uh, she can have a companion uh, monster uh, basically solve some puzzles. So one of them freezes things, one of them uh, creates earthquakes, one of them flies around and electrocutes things. Um, it, it comes across pretty okay, and there's only a handful of levels using it, so it's like, it doesn't outstay its welcome. I like it. It's neat. Uh, the third type of level is uh, Sitch drives a car. You have some fairly run-of-the-mill mode 7 gameplay. There's, uh, there's not much to really say about it. It just kind of happens, but it's okay. Uh, but all of this kind of comes together in a nice little three-hour adventure where, you know, you'll do some running gunning on one level, and then you'll do some puzzles, and then you'll do some jumping, and then you'll do a boss fight. And the boss fights them are all generally short, but they all have a different mechanic with them. Um, you know, there's something that you're exploiting. Uh, what a strange shape for a level, eh? Um, so, it, it's pretty ordinary at the end of the day. I don't think there's something too special about this game. But one thing I like is that it does come together as a very, very nice package. And I was not expecting it out of a Lilo and Sitch 2. Um, there's also a, 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 just a little, like, small collectible kind of angle if you're playing the Retro Achievement set. Um... One of the levels is incredibly cruel. It expects you to basically shoot down to hover. What is... Okay, I'm now questioning... Oh, no, that's... Come get some. Well, okay, I've got this, but... Now what? It doesn't look like there's anything up there, and I mean, I can even jetpack just to verify. I think that's just there to credit the jetpack users. I mean, it's obviously a big door, and it's got the letter A on it, but... A, what is this about? This isn't a, uh, a place you can go down, is it? No. Neither is here. They've confused me. They've confused me. I'm now slightly lost. I can backtrack all the way, but that's a bit of an insane backtrack. Especially when that ledge is too far away. You know what I mean? There's a bit too many one-way kind of ledges and platforms and things like that. For that to particularly make sense, and especially as the, like... As the last door. Hold on, what? Don't tell me that this was like, you had to go up here the whole way. Oh my gosh, you had to come here first. You <laughs> get all the way to the end of that of the level, basically, before it's like, Oh, did you open the switch that says A? No. Whoopsies. Gotta go all the way back. That was a good pro shot, though. Alright, let it be known. Whoever designed this level, you're cruel. But you had to flip that switch. Catch myself with a jetpack. That's not me no clipping, that's just the jetpack. Hi there, enemies, how are you doing? Um, I don't know, a little in such game was alright, so. Uh, I haven't beaten any other games, but I would like to officially say as well, I am done with Guitar Hero 80's uh, Encore. I got 46 full combos out of 60. I am very, very happy. There were two songs I didn't manage to do on bass. Um, I think one was, uh, uh, was it, um, Cordon and Mosh? And, uh, one was, uh, Radar Love. Just has like a bit of a choke at the end, and I'm like, ah, that's. 
Actually, oh, did I get Rayla Love? Maybe I did get Rayla Love. Someone check. Someone check. I might have gotten it. Alright, now we go all the way back to the level. Take that full damage again. And this door should be open now. There you go. Very nice. Uh, this is, um... Platforming. Then we gotta... Oh! Oh, oh, oh. I, I'm not sure what is uh, happening to these lifts, but okay, because I, I would have imagined it goes up Yeah, I, I seem to trigger it the wrong way. Yeah, I seem to trigger it the wrong way. Oh Boy, oh no, I glitched it I glitched it. I saved right here No clip so I really should be standing here, and then, not the same thing happened. Alright, and then I make this jump. So I'm, I'm not wasting my time with that, come on. Your levels don't work. This is an officially released, like, Duke expansion, and I swear, it is kind of broken. And they spawn some enemies behind me. Tasteful, guys, tasteful. But at least the level ends. I guess. <laughs> sure. Alright, the Abbey. Who wants some? Abbey, Abbey, Abbey. Oh. They do indeed teleport away. Uh, for a hundred enemies, or 99 enemies, so sure do pack all of them right in the main lobby here. Everyone likes packing enemies in the main lobby, so... Um, yeah. I thought Guitar Hero 80s was okay. Nothing too flash, but... It's alright. It's probably... I, I, I wrote down it's the least exciting Guitar Hero. So you should probably, like... If you haven't played any... It's probably the last one you'd probably get around to playing. Uh, just because it's two again, and two's alright, but I don't think this one has a very interesting track variety or presentation. It's just kind of like, eh, it's, it exists. We have the walls. Stop doing the walls. Stop doing... It's a bit of just monster room, ain't it? of enemies. And they didn't hide anything in the waterfall. Barrels. This reminds me of, um, of, a uh, E1M9. The secret level. Ooh. Whoa! Whoa! Hold on, excuse me. We caught the teleporting enemies just in the action right there. Alright, this level consists of a lot of pig cops. We have identified that that is indeed the case. There's just a lot of them, ain't it? Okay, well we got more rocket launcher. I need a yellow key card. Uh, we've got double pills. The steroids, which I don't use a crazy amount of. We've got two of them, just in case you need two. Just keep getting them this, because as if I'm going to use them any other time. Okay. Um, so yeah, so what am I playing now? I am currently uh, committing myself to Tony Hawk Underground. It's the last game- Hey, they are invisible. I'm not going insane. 
Um, I'm committing myself to Tony Hawk Underground. Uh, I've played all the rest before it, and I'm like, I enjoy it. Um, I'm not getting used to getting off the board. That's something new for me. Oh, wow. Wow. Aren't these game designers wonderful? It's dark as well. You can barely tell it's even happening. They give you health. At least they gave you something for it. Why is it? Why is it like poke out there? Keep clear. Oh, well, there you go. We found the other secret level. It's in here. Which there were multiple key cards. And I found none of them, and I still managed to get a thing that lets me leave the level. Pretty clean. I briefly played Ribbit Golf. I don't know if I uh, want to continue playing Ribbit Golf, but I was in the mood for a golf game, and that one looked uh, curious. Okay, and I didn't get a key card in that direction as well. So I'll we'll keep looking around. We'll find the goods. Unless they keep spawning enemies on me, there's not many more on the thing. Oh boy. Oh boy. You know where this is going. I don't know if it's, like, good that I can easily predict that you're about to sp spam a ton of enemies on me. I'm just gonna leave him. I'm just gonna- Oh, he spawned one more just to- just to be a bit cruel. Okay, sure. Okay, right, back to the main room. Now I have a red key card. There was one red door somewhere. I guess I was back out here. Sorry, man. I'm gonna, gonna pass you again. The yellow one was there. Was the red one back here? This isn't quite flowing like it probably should. This looks like a door. Oh, it is a door. Oh, I mean, that's all it went to, I guess. Red keycard here. Which gets me a blue keycard. And the one time you think they would spawn some enemies behind me, and instead it's just a backtrack. Okay, sure. Oh, that's, that's great. This is, uh, still in the Abbey, isn't it? Have you ever been to an Abbey with a space station on the top floor? I sure haven't, to be fair. Why is there another blue keycard up here? Like, oh, sorry, like, the use of it. Uh, this is, uh, Egg Central. I don't know what's going on there, but for sure. I'm assuming they just want to spawn enemies on you. What's going on in here as well? The cyberspace room? Oh, sorry, I wanted to enter the cyberspace room. <laughs> okay. I feel like I've dodged so many enemies in this level already, so... Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming to bite me now. Uh, Duked me on that one. So then I go back over here, and now we can use the not over here, sorry, the other way. We can use that yellow key card to definitely not reveal a boss enemy, right? Now I'm worried. Now I'm worried. What are you hiding up here? drop down from the ceiling. Well, there's one! There's two! There's three! There's four! Four boss enemies! Ah! 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 And all you gotta do is run straight towards the end and, uh, there's your end door. door. Okay, cool. <laughs> Time to just access the secret exit. Which was, uh, over here, wasn't 
Oh, was, yeah, where the air vents were. Yeah, yeah. How very strange. Okay. <laughs> we're doing alright. We're doing alright here. Turn a bow. I guess I will. Turn a bow, turn a bow. Uh, I've also got some other topics I'd like to just briefly mention, although they're probably not that long, um, and I'm probably just saying the obvious on some of them, but, uh, or alternatively, I know nothing about it, and I'm just giving a very, very, um, un... what's the term? Uneducated, uh, opinion on it. You be the judge. Also, what is going on here? Oh, I... And he's falling into the lava. He can't do the jump and shoot. Very odd. But okay. What is this layout? What is happening here? Oh, there. <laughs> yeah, what's going on here? The guy is standing in the lava just seems so odd. And also the fact that they don't get affected by lava. Which is kind of a problem in the actual game as well, because it's like crushing floors in Doom, you know? It's like they hate it. Oh, I thought this would be a door. What the? What did I... What the... What? Why, Why can you walk in on that side? Okay. Uh, we have, uh, conveyor belts. Everyone likes conveyor belts. Especially me. Are you, are you kidding me? They put babes in the, uh, in the little pits. Oh my gosh, okay. They put babes in the pits. Or they just want to spawn them in. Oh, there's no babes in the pits. They're just, they're just cruel. They just want to spawn stuff on me. All right, get, walking past this room. I don't care. Okay, clean room. Enemies. We got the blue one. We recolored them. Sometimes we made them blue. Oh, what on earth are you doing here? Oh, I don't trust this at all. What is, what is happening here? Is this, oh, I assume you need to go to both sides. Where is he? Where is he hiding? It's a bit disorienting, ain't it? It's gonna get it. Off with a hit. Oh, shit. Oh, right there. Open the door. Lava. Lots of Octa Brains, got it. Okay, sure. So, uh, yeah, okay, topic number one is, um, there's a, uh, there's a, uh, reviewer's guide, apparently, floating around. Lots of drama, actually. Let's just, let's just name drop it. The game, why can I, why can I barely see anything in this room? Hi, yes, we forgot to do lighting. We just decided a completely pitch black room on the way to the end while there's certainly mini bosses shooting at me. Okay, sure. Um, okay. Uh, water slide. Um, also for note, there's, uh, uh, ten levels left. We are officially past the halfway mark, so. Yay. I know, right? 21 levels, but trust me, it was one stream. It, re it really is just one stream's worth of stuff Duke's zone to. Uh, the other expansions may potentially be shorter. We'll see how we go. I, I feel like they're enough for a stream each, but still, we'll see. Um, oh, he's going, he's, he's going somewhere. Oh, what's up there? I've still got the jetpack. Thank you, game. And we're back to... So 
<laughs> I, I was like, oh, we're back to cyberspace, and it turns out, no, we are back to dying space. I like that for dodging. Yeah, what is what's happening here? Okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm just like... I'm trying to deal with this guy. So. There you go. Take that cyberspace floor. Oh. Take that cyberspace floor. Oh, what? Oh, snap. And now I'm in this little tiny hole. What? What is happening here? Okay. This is very incompetent for me, but uh, yeah, the game uh, Black Myth Wukong uh, is uh, about to come out, and uh, it's had a, uh, um, a benchmark tool available for a while, so you can test that it works on your machine. It's kind of intensive. It's it's like uh, part of me is like mm, maybe it is like a good-looking game, but it's also remarkably intensive on the computer. Um, like there's like a 1080p cinematic mode, and it's like. With the ray tracing on and the frame generation on, it's like, yep, back to 90 FPS or so on a 4090, which is all right. Uh, oh, is it? It's 1080p. Um, granted, that is with ray tracing on. You can get some fairly all right frame rates uh, for um, the hardware. Oh, I thought we were going non-Euclidean for a moment. Now, for a level called Water Slide, it should kind of stop pretty quick. So, hi there. Blends in the wall a lot. Um, but yeah, I don't really know much about Black Myth Wukong. I, all I can say is I know people were hyped. So whatever I say is probably going to uh, rub the, someone the wrong way, unfortunately. Um, but the big controversy, or at least a controversy, because there's a bunch of them. One is about the, uh, the working conditions of the studio, the um, things they said. I pointed out as well there was a point of a, uh, like... They said, you know, you need a U.S. consultancy firm, or else people are going to take. Hey, hey, hey! Where was he? Uh, or else people are going to take your game, like view it as insensitive or that kind of stuff. And then immediately, like once they said that was the case, people started finding it insensitive, uh, which is weird because it's like it's a game about Chinese lore, is it not? Chinese mythology? Maybe it's about the Monkey King, isn't it? We, we made the door silent. I don't mind an alien base level. Also, there's our blue keycard. And a bunch of enemy spawns. You know, sure, okay. Um, yeah, 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 okay, okay, that's good. That's good, I, I, I roughly know what the plot is roughly about. Um... So a part of me is just like, I don't know, like, they should just be able to make, like, the game they want. Like, I don't know, oh, jeez. Um, I don't see there being really any, like, hard, you know, you gotta, you gotta make it cater to American audiences or else they're gonna find it. It's like, bro, it's, it's a Chinese story. Like, I'm the one who, like, should feel like, you know, the one confused here. If, if I play it, I'm like, oh, I don't get it. But, like, it's their, you know, it's their story. I don't think, I, I don't know, it's, that, that just seems kind of straightforward to me, it's just like, hey, it's, it's, it's fine, it's whatever they want to build, whatever they want to make, okay, this, uh, this raft is, uh, quite an annoying sequence of jumps, oh, the hollow juke is, oh, wow, I hit the turret anyways, that's what I was aiming for, um, I don't know, it seems kind of obvious to me for that, so I don't know why, like, it even needs consulting firms. It even needs to like abide by any Western standards. It's like it's not my prerogative to to like you know yell at a game for not doing what Western Ooh, studios that? would do. It's like hey, they do what they do. It's fine, easy. Um, a recent thing is coming out, basically saying uh, to the reviewers, you cannot talk about like you have to show that you're having fun. Which I'm like, okay, it's a review, like. I, I feel like if you get a review copy, I do want people to be, you know, 
uh, opining honestly, so I'm like, hey. Oh, was it the streamer's guy? That's what... I don't know, actually. It's a bit all over the place. <laughs> the reporting was all over the place on this one in particular, let's just say that. Um, these, these notes, by the way, may or may not even exist. Because the only people who saw them are reviewers and streamers, and not all reviewers and streamers saw it. So, which one is it? It's a bit confusing, and one could make the case of maybe it is real. I don't know, we'd never really, really know. All we don't know is that the, the journalists are somewhat saying this happened en masse, which uh, I'm not saying uh, journalists have conspired before. Cough, cough, 10 year anniversary of that event. Oh boy. Um, we still need a yellow key card. I assume that's back down the water slide in the actual direction it went. Back to the cyberspace room, I guess. Does that mean I have to- yep, okay, he's just chilling there. Um... Hi there, how you doing? Uh, but... Yeah, uh, there was that, there was one of like, you're not allowed to talk about, um, politics? On stream or in your thing while showing the game? Um... Which is uh, a curious point. They even, I think the thing explicitly mentioned feminism. I'm like, oh boy, that's been a, a while since uh, that was a hot enough topic. That That's not a secret level. That's a... Well, okay, sure. They just wanted to show... Well... <laughs> like, what I, what I assume they're doing is they're doing skybox drawing. But for some odd reason, they haven't yet. Like, I think there's no texture here. And the skybox rendering doesn't stop drawing sprites in that direction, so I think that's probably what's happening there. Hey, at least that's the, like, the fun kind of secret, where it's just like, it's a, it's a bad wall texture. It's the easiest kind of secret, and a lot of people accept that. As. There's not a lot of destructible walls in any of these levels, so I'll tell you that. You know, what on earth? Come on, guys. Every time, every time the enemy spawns behind you, you're like, ugh, oh, again. It looks like there could have been a key here, but really that teleports me back up here. Okay, that that makes a bit more sense why I'm here, but then the question is... Oh, I, I picked up the key card. I'm, <laughs> I'm like looking at it going, oh, what's going on there? Um, also, I guess that put me in the right spot, so... Hold on. <laughs> back up, back up. So we're here. And we run forward, go up the lift, run through the long corridor. Run down the long ramp. We're not back to this room. Hold on. No, it was somewhere, somewhere back here. And you put in all the key cards. I'll spot it on the way back because uh, I definitely saw it on the way back. Uh, it wasn't down here, was it? Oh, there we go. Up in the yellow one. Now this door <coughs> may or may not. Oh. What does the other switch do? Death switch. Death switch. Got it. <laughs> well, I shall leave. Thank you, laddie. We shall go. Um. Yeah, a lot of that kind of stuff. Now, I feel like if you're a streamer or what something... I mean, I guess if you're getting a free copy of the game such that someone wants you to play it a certain way... <clears throat> it's weird for them to ask. And also... I think they're within their prerogative? I mean, you're playing a game ahead of launch. Like... I don't... I mean, you're basically just doing free marketing for them. Or well, not free, because... Technically... You know, you may not be a sale afterwards, and potentially you may be scaring away customers if you do it a certain way. But it's just like that. I mean, that's the angle I just see is like you're, you're just doing marketing. That's that's all it is. That's what like pre-release kind of stuff is always for the media. It's like well, it helps the media because they like getting attention, but also they want games to be interesting because oh, wow, okay, it's a couple of dudes in this direction. Oh.
I like how the sloped water, you can't, like, have objects stuck down in it. Some guy teleported. Oh, okay. I was back. I mean, it makes sense we're doing alien based levels. You know, it's episode two, why not? Oh, hi there. Big door. Some good combination. Wow, they just made this room way big. Way big. Um, but I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know if I fully believe the, uh, you know, the, the, the streamers claiming that uh, they're not allowed to talk politics on stream. But on the other hand, I'm also kind of like, you know, that maybe there are topics. I don't know. Like, it uh, kind of goes both ways. I really don't know what to, what to think of it. Um... I can certainly say though that like all the like, uh, oh my gosh, enemies spawning, all the like controversy and, and things people are like saying, oh how dare they do this or how dare they like, you know, make people abide by these rules. It's like, at the end of the day, it's a game that you will be able to just buy and play and all these rules about like what the streamers can do is like a strange footnote of right now, but that's it. It just exists right now and that's... That should really be it. I don't think it really means that much. I don't think uh, people should really care too much about what games are even like before they played it. You know, because games change. Performance changes ahead of time. Uh, the, you know, reviews can just sometimes be like entirely paid off. See Metal Gear Solid 5. Um, like there's lots and lots and lots of... Oh, hi there. Um, Wow, they're just spawning tons of enemies behind me again. Wow. We gotta shrink that boss as well. Oh, hi there. Cool. Okay. Come get some. This is gonna be fun. A lot of health, didn't it? Take two, take two. He's got the bomb, he's got the bomb. Okay, we're good. <laughs> we're all good, we're all good. What's going on here, man? This is not how I would design my, uh, my castle KFC. <laughs> I wouldn't quite put a... Is this like a space ramp? Oh, you can't go up it. What a shame. Oh, there's another one. There's another one in the other direction. I'm gonna spawn enemies behind me again. Oh, we're good. So... But yeah, I don't know much about Black Myth Wukong, but if I keep name dropping Black Myth Wukong, is that like enough to go, ah, oh, it's an interesting game. There was a, I feel like, I don't know, there's, we had the same rigmarole with Stellar Blade at the beginning of the year as well. And I, I like, I don't own a PS5. I'm not going to be playing that game. Also, I don't play brand new games very often. Um, but like... You know, I think there's a lot of games that get, like, this kind of treatment. Where they're like, oh, you know, controversy, controversy, something weird, something weird. And it's just like, I don't know, part of me thinks that sometimes it's manufactured, sometimes it's uh, a guerrilla marketing strat. Um, certainly some, some games would want to always be in the public spotlight. And so, a bit of bad news is still good news. Then people will remember, what? <laughs> also, yeah, what is happening here? It's not textured on the back, it looks very odd. Secret tunnel. Okay, sure. Oh, we're still going with a secret. Hey, 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 it's a tiny room. It's a tiny room. Don't do that to me. And we're back out here. That makes sense. Okay. So what was with me putting in the blue key card? There's a claw up there. Like a different claw. That looks like I've got to go through... Some other route to get up there, I'd imagine. I don't 
don't suppose there's like a lift or something back here. Because this is, yeah, this is where I put in the blue key card. Now it's just, oh, uh, guess where, guess where the, the map continues. Oh, looks like maybe there's something up there. Oh. Oh, nice. I do like this room over room. <laughs> don't like the enemies from spawning. Nuh-uh. Not at all. Okay, now we gotta, I guess, wait. Yeah, at least they're reusing this mechanic. All to get a red key card. Uh, you guess where I've seen the red key card before. But uh, given that I opened this door, and I had to fight a big dude at the end there. Yeah, okay. Hey, hey, no teleporting. Teleport, no teleporting. Oh. Wow. I'm getting a bit serious, Sam, with these like wide corridors full of enemies, and we're gonna have every single teleporting enemy just like phase back in. They all invoked it, they're all uninvoking it. Um Yeah, no, what is with yeah, what is with like internet controversy? And and on top of that, it really does depend on the circle you 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 know, you hang out in, because I completely forgot Black Myth Wukong existed until I saw some, uh, some tweets on my timeline and, uh, a hardware unboxed, like, optimization guide for it. I was like, oh, yeah. Huh. I know it's big, I guess, but, like, man, you know, like, I sort of just play these games when, like, people have played them and, like, really like them. I think Stellar Blade, I legitimately haven't heard that much. Much too much useless tra Yeah, exactly, exactly. We need, uh, I mean, to be fair, most drama is quite useless. Some of it does stir, you know, the important things, which is, hey, you know, like some people on the internet uh, do bad things and it doesn't get coverage. And I know sometimes it is drama, but sometimes it's like, yeah, you can make everything. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Exactly. We're sort of at this like point where it's like I feel like this is a this is a um maybe a bit of a bit of a dead internet theory adjacent take, but it's like because there's so much like AI content and training content, I think a lot of sites are basically like incentivized so hard to just I don't think it's the end of the level. Um a lot of websites are just incentivized to like run the controversy bar so high. Basically, we need user engagement. That's the be-all end-all metric. It's not necessarily to get like analytic or like, you know, ads or all that stuff. It's to literally drive the engagement, get people immediately responding to things so that you can basically piece together your language model better. And in doing so, what incentive is there to make people not mad? Also, hi, we just started a level in the months, like, 15 other enemies. At least we can circle straight. But, like, actually count the kill count. If it's 15, I'm gonna be mad. Oh, it's more than 15. It's more than 15. We've got a big dude in there already. Um, but yeah, no more controversy. I, I try to, like, I talk about controversy sometimes, but I don't think it's, like, healthy to participate in it in any way. I'm just like, hey, you know, like, people are mad about this. Why? What is going on? And then just try to, like, get a reasonable view of what's happened. And then go, ah, okay, like, is it is it warranted? Is it uh, just... Whatever, and a lot of the time, it is just whatever. Damn, I'm good. Ultimately, this is a video game, it's like, hey, you know, like... 
it shouldn't matter too much from our perspective as consumers really what happens i think journalists are going to try and do journalist things we really make you care about certain topics but uh, at the end of the day i would love if they made like the oh man Oh man, they they put an underwater maze here, and they didn't give me a scuba tank, as for, and the enemies are upside down. Oh, oh. Or to get a blue key card. Did we have the blue door earlier? Nice. Yeah, what's with all the enemies being upside down? Ah, oh, look, a scuba tank. Scuba, scuba tank. Copywritten. You're allowed to like just sing songs all of a sudden. Twitch, I need some some <laughs> some uh, guidance on this one. Uh, okay, so let's move on to not controversial things. Uh, just like plain obvious, it's a good thing. Uh, Civ Seven is coming out at some point, and Civ Six uh, came out in 2016. It's been eight years nearly, uh, and they announced that uh, the uh, I think it was the 2K launcher would not be present in Civ 7. And also, as of today, they're also just removing it from Civ 6. You don't need it anymore. Now, launches are a fun topic because launches are painfully obvious why they exist, which is company wants to drive number. They want to pretend like there's a lot of users on their platform and they're gonna tell the investors, look how many people actively open up our program every so often because they're forced to do it in order to play a good game. Do you gain anything out of using a launcher? Never. Never. That integration can actually be in the game itself. There really is no reason for many games to even have a launcher. Now, obviously some people are gonna go, oh, I enjoy Steam, and that is because Steam has a lot of fun features and a community that people like. That. But the actual launching your game with Steam, I don't think people particularly are that fond of as well. Not even for DRM. Also, hi, that's actually that's actually the boss version. The only launcher I allow. Oh, I'm gonna pause to read this one. The only launcher I allow is the Paradox launcher because that way they implemented the crossplay feature between Steam, GOG, etc., and the modding setup for the different games. Um, I do like, like, okay, launches are fine when it's like, oh, you need to have some things before the game loads up. So a mod launcher, completely cool with. I hate the ones where it's more just like, this is a interaction launcher. The whole Steam, GOG, etc. crossplay can be in-game. And my prime example is uh, Aliens vs Predator from 1999, which sounds like a very strange choice, but they patched the game to have, uh, that was one of, if, if not the first one, to advertise GOG crossplay. Um, the GOG crossplay at, with Steam did not require a launcher. It was all just in the game. And uh, you could definitely. I do not. Oh my gosh, this is. Uh, this is a bit absurd. I'm gonna need all this health to fight these guys. Um, now, that being said, there are some. I don't know if the Paradox launcher has more functionality in the game. Maybe it does. Like, I mean, I don't want to be like. You know classify all launchers in the same light because all of them are different. The 2K launcher definitely is the driver number. <laughs> like, it is 100% there. The same thing as uh, Bethesda Net, the same thing as Uplay and Origin way back when was literally designed to be that functionality. They wanted to not, you know, not let Steam take cuts of their profit, so they implemented the whole launch and all that stuff just to try and get at it themselves. And it's like, oh my gosh. Um, as that functionality, you can ignore it. I mean, it's okay, but yeah. I, I Like, even if it's just the download, I think they still look and care. Yeah, this is kind of annoying. That it's like all the bosses there. Which one do I fight? Do I fight... Am I really running out of weapons to use as well? I don't have a shotgun, a pistol. Please. Uh, the only thing I use launch for the Paradox game is that they develop themselves. It can be modded. I'm not sure if they also force it for your other games. I think, yeah, I think the launcher is, like for like Europa Universalis, for example, um, I'm pretty sure that launcher is probably just there to start the game. I don't think there is like a, 
like a, this is the uh, Paradox Games Launcher. Please make a Paradox account to launch from your Paradox Games and you always have to use that. It is a mod launcher. Yeah, yeah. I, like that, that's a scenario I'm super duper cool with. Actually, are they infighting right now? I could just get this guy to like, shoot this other guy and then we're good. Alright, we've now triggered all the bosses, and they're all stuck in there. And they don't shoot at each other. Also, I'm just saying it's episode 2. Do you think we'd have the episode 2 boss? Like, on his own. Why do we need all three bosses right next to each other? Oh, he's trying to, he's trying to break free. He's trying to break free. Don't do it. Size difference, I'll tell you. Hey there, how you doing? Oh, he, he's a goner. I think you need to create a Paradox account as well, which is what is used for crossplay. Pretty sure you can skip that step for offline play though, and on Steam it just auto logs it for you. I just ran into that guy. Um, I. I think definitely like having an account to do crossplay is an implementation detail and I think a lot of games probably love like the idea of connecting like because if you don't have an account with that game or at least some way to identify which is basically an account um then uh you're never going to have the ability to link your GOG version and your Steam version together if you ever did that um and I think that's probably the reason why they do that but you can have an underlying account that requires at least one of the logins in order to start and uh, effectively your account on the site is just one of three. I'm pretty sure one of these guys has to die. Um, I don't even know if I had to make a Paradox account back in the day since it was seven years ago or if the Steam auto did. Yeah, if it's all through the Steam API, um, you know, like, all it is is that it's an account on their end, which is just literally your Steam account. And I don't think there's really anything that is serious about that, that kind of stuff. I think that's all fine. Lots of other ones love getting your email address though, I'll tell you that. So, you gotta keep an eye out for that. But the 2K launcher is now gone, uh, or at least it is for, for Civ 7. It's so strange to see it go away because it's like, and especially be removed, because then it obviously means it was never needed. And if it was never needed, it wasn't there. Um, Get him. Just body block him for me, please. Just keep going, keep going, keep body blocking him. Is that it? Are we good? We are good. Okay, good. I was like, I was like, come on, we, we have to only fight the one boss of this episode. The episode two boss. Alright, there we go. Two episodes down, one to go. We have now got monkey. Was that shines or shrines? Monkey shines. Come get some. And we're coming in and getting some. Back to the says the last one. Dining out. We've got the music again. I like the pedestal. Very nice. Um, talking about paradox, I played a controversial game yesterday. Did controversial things. Heart of Iron Four. How could you? You monster. You monster. <laughs> Uh, Hearts of Iron 4 is a, a good time. I am too small brain to appreciate those games quite fully, but it, I, I hear great things about pretty much all of them. With like 200 to 400,000 Italians. It's the good stuff. It's the good stuff. It's doing the good fight. Oh, what is going on back here? Hail to the king, baby. I feel like the this might be a bit overkill. There was a sacrifice I was willing to make. Italy owns France, half of Africa, Yugoslavia. I miss Yugoslavia, okay? I take it back. I take it back. <laughs> I 
was watching um, Darkman 2 over the, uh, the past weekend and uh, they name dropped Yugoslavia and I was like, ah, oh, ah, oh, poor Yugoslavia. Uh, and Romania and the Czech are my puppets. <laughs> Very nice. Is this a karaoke interaction again? Nope. Guess not. It almost feels like there should be enemies spawning in. Power drop Paris. Very nice, very nice. I gotta actually, like, I really should learn how to play these kinds of games. Um, it's just a lot of parallel mechanics, and I always get a bit, like, doozied. And I know there's the wiki. Oh, this is a bit interesting. I know there's the wiki, which has, like, a nice, like, kind of first time, kind of, this is how you go through. But I think I also maybe need just someone to sit down and, like, really show it to me. Um, France capitulate instantly at the beginning of what? That is a typical France moment. Very typical France. Kind of neat area though, I'll tell you that. We've got the room over room here and the... That going on there. Apparently that works since uh, released seven years ago because France has a huge capitulation. Be uh, blah. Debuff. Okay, well maybe I don't have to be here just yet. Whoa, whoa, what? <laughs> Did I just interact with the door and then the door's like, nope, you die now. I'm gonna kill you forever. That door is closed right now. Oh, yeah, no, it swings out. Sorry. If I had a dollar for every time that happened, I'd have three dollars, which is strange that it's happened three times. I'm expecting a key card out. Oh, fire. I say I'm expecting a key card, but at some point I picked up a blue key card and I just still haven't recognized. So if you attack them in 1936 or early 1937, they don't have an air force, you instantly get enough air superiority to launch paratroopers, and just dropping one on Paris wins the war. No blood spilled, but the French capitulated unconditionally to the Italians. Very, very nice. They're just hard coded. Just, you know. French don't like it. Oh, I thought those were the explosive ones. Okay. So I think that's the Terminator arm from like some other level. Just casually here. Um, okay, I think that was a switch, so it probably activated the doors up above. Or at least one of them, maybe? This one? No? It's not like I have a key card. It would make sense there would be one of these doors. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. Yellow key card. Okay, now I gotta Oh, it was back. Oh, it was all the way back. Come on, guys, it was a short level. And your door here kills people as well. Now I'm gonna need to just backtrack again. Look at that. Red key card. Backtrack all the way. Ah. And there we go. Red key in the door. Open the door. Big explosion. Look at that. We actually got an explosion finally. We did it. And, uh, ooh, 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 oh my goodness. There wasn't an easy way to do a... To do a staircase, you had to just have a lot of the flat floors. Actually, that's not a trivial thing, that actually is, like, the way of doing... Oh! Well, it turns out I was on a rooftop the whole time. And, uh, we have one on the other side as well. Oh. Very similar one, okay. 
Oh, but we do have come the chain come. gun. Very nice. Uh, I think you just step on the end here, right? Yeah, it just ends. Ready for action. We are ready for some action, apparently. The company. Cool. Uh, so I've got one last topic, and it escaped my memory again. Ah, oh, well. I'll get back to it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, the topic was, uh... Jonathan Blow is a person. Um, Jonathan Blow is a, uh... Reasonably well-regarded game designer of, uh... You know, indie games. He worked on Braid, which was a very, very, you know, cult classic indie game um, from, when was it, 2009, 2010? Um, definitely has a lot of love. Um, and I'd recommend it. It'd give it a good, yeah, yeah, Braid, yeah. Um, it's a, uh, a platformer, a puzzle platformer. Yeah, it's a puzzle platformer involving effectively time shenanigans. Uh, different worlds will basically play out with different mechanics, so sometimes it's like you can go back in time and, uh, you know, correct, uh, you know, some behavior, or sometimes it's like you go back in time but some of the enemies don't go back in time. Um, there's one I played where it's like you can constantly go left and right, um, which, like, if you stop, everyone stops. As you move right, the enemies move forward. As you move left, the enemies move equally as back. Um, yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice, uh, style. Um, and, uh, yeah, um, he also made, uh, The Witness as well. Um, does that say Namco? No, it says Danger. That's how you know. I'm so tired, apparently. Um, okay, I need a blue key card in there, so I guess we'll just go up some stairs. Um, yeah, he made The Witness, which is a, a first-person puzzle, uh, kind of game, and it's got some incredibly obtuse puzzles. Like, oh my gosh, it's just this kind of stuff where it's like you write down literally everything and then you try to you try to rule out what exactly you're looking at hi yes is that that's the secret exit right i'm gonna try and explore the rest of the level but just yeah okay that's the secret exit what is that oh what hmm okay I've got the blue key card, so we'll just continue on, but like, I'm two minutes into this level. I've got half the kills already, unless it spawns a ton of stuff on me. And we blow up everyone. Oh. You know, it's been a while since we've had some big explosions, so... Um, anyway, the reason why I mentioned Jonathan Blow is that I basically announced that Braid Anniversary Edition, to celebrate the 10th anniversary of Braid, uh, sold horrendously. I don't know when this came out, I actually did not know that there was an anniversary edition. Uh, part of me also thinks, is, is the game not perfect as it is? Do we need an anniversary edition? And the answer is, I think his company needed some money because uh, The Witness came out in 2016. And uh, indie studios do not last that long. And he's not a one-man show, it's like a dozen people in the studio. I like this volcano bit. Nice. Hole in the wall. Has some health. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But that's the end of the level. That's the end of the level. That was way short, wasn't it? Like that that was it. <laughs> that's all it was. Okay. Well, back up, let's hit the secret exit, which is literally here. Yeah, there wasn't much to do in that one, was there? Okay. Let's rock. Let's rock. Banzai. 34 enemies. Groovy. Well, the exit's just there. Can I crouch back and just Ooh. leave the level again? Come on, guys. Come on, guys. <laughs> rock. That's that's a bit that's a bit shocking. Cool. Playtest your levels, guys. Playtest your levels. <laughs> oh. That's so sad. Um, now Jonathan Blow is, uh, he streams his game development a bit on Twitch, and he's, uh, he's got some fun opinions, I guess. Uh, I remember seeing one of, uh, Jonathan Blow's, uh, suggested keyboards, and people start recommending some more and more outrageous kinds of keyboards. Um, oh, very nice sign. Um, but also, I feel like Jonathan Blow is, uh, perhaps... 
I don't know, this is this is probably more of a character attack than anything. I don't know the guy. Yeah, okay, we just spawned tons of enemies in just because you saw the you saw the mystical button and the fire is still there. Oh. Interesting. Come get me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Lure him in. Lure him in. Enjoy. Yeah, piece of cake. <laughs> oh, you want some too? <laughs> Very nice. Oh, that was that was a weird effect. Oh, hi there. And we got blue ones for some reason. They're blue. Dabba dee dabba die. And he's already dead. What happened there? He already died. So, um, yeah, I don't know the guy that much, so I, I would definitely say Grain of Salt, like, I can't really do a, a big character assassination, but I think there's a point of, um, there's a lot of indie studios that, mm, or indie developers that sort of are one-hit wonders, and that's a bit of a tough, like, call to say, because it's like, as a, as a game developer, you want to keep, you know, making games, and certainly, you know, you can't just retire now. You know, you want to keep making stuff. Um, but on the other hand, it's like, I'm not too sure if this company exactly, uh, you know, could say afloat by him spending his time working on projects like this and other kinds of things. Perhaps he could have just personally retired. But, mm, sort of driving your own company into the ground. Uh, you know, just, like, best I'd say is just poor financing. Taking too long for a product, missing your market. Those are a one hit wonders of two niche arcade games. Yeah, yeah, definitely. This is a nice, fun arc. Uh, sorry, okay. Uh, arena style uh, map. Very nice. But I will also add what's the point? I have to admit, I have a couple of their games from Arkin Games. They are mind blowing. Oh, sorry, you said arcade games. I was like, arcade? Arcade, okay. yeah. Um, which ones Which ones are Arkin? Which which games did I make? Okay, so I killed all the enemies. This, this literally just want me to go back anyways. It's just a secret level where they just want you to have, have a bit of a romp. And you can barely see what you're doing in here. It looks like it curves around. There you go. How strange. Uh, that doesn't connect anywhere else. This is just... This is a deathmatch map. AI wars most prominently. Uh -huh. I feel like they're not trying as much on these ones. I mean, the enemy count is maybe a little bit of a sign, but also like... Yeah, that's some... Weirder design. Like, I'm apparently crouching right now. Something's pushing me down here. Uh, the Last Federation as well, that one got a Total Biscuit video back in the day. Currently Heart of the Machine, which looks real fascinating. Ooh. I'll give it a check out, I'll give it a check out. Who wants some? Mm, yeah, we're starting to get into the... I don't know if they're trying as much level design here. Oh. Like the scale is just all off now. The water is not even flowing the right way. I'm being pushed out that way. What? <laughs> oh, this sounds a lot like AoE 1. With the, the MIDI. The MIDI makes it so, so great. Where's the enemies? I remember, I, I saw some people say the difficulty was all over the place. I'm like, no enemies? And you got those, uh, seventh chords. Cool. The sound font is like... 
not the best uh, for those kinds of chords, but who cares? It's good fun. Groovy. Oh. What? Oh. Oh, what the? What? Oh, oh. Do we have a way out? No, no. No, we don't have a way out. What? I don't think they playtest at a level. Oh boy, they really didn't playtest the level. There's just an invisible wall here. Can you not. S what? Uh, so to. to, to mildly review the the quality of this uh, expansion certainly um, the actual expansions later on are a lot more themed and marketable I'd say these just feel like oh you know it's a bunch of levels and uh, when the quality of the levels is a bit hit on this it definitely hurts in like trying to say whether it's worthwhile to play this um, that being said I guess it comes with an interesting case study I think it's Total War games versus Paradox games Oh, in terms of expansions. Or, what was the context? Sorry, I just went right past. Um, but yeah, like, oh, both arose during the high time of RTS games. Ooh. Yes. In the same way as this arose in the high time of first-person shooters. Which I've never recovered since. Um... Yeah, Duke Nukem 3D definitely, you know, set off the storm. Set the world by storm. It has uh, a lot of a lot of features going for it, a lot of nice little mechanics. Um, certainly, though, that like you know, it's more effort to make a a du oh boy, uh, it's more effort to make a Duke Nukem 3D map, I'd say. Why some of them wear red? What's up that? Total War is constantly trying to change up the weak part of their games uh, and dumbing down the outstanding battle part. While Paradox is six in app games. That's a, that's a niche. And that's fair. And I actually, I, I do kind of appreciate games for sticking to their niche quite a fair bit. I think it can kind of work either way. I'm not too fussed about like, oh, you know, the the. I, I guess games that know what's good, I would like them to keep doing what's good, but sometimes you just gotta spice it up and somewhat that doesn't ruin the original, if you know what I mean. Like as in if you don't try to recreate the original all the time, you know, the original stays being the original. While the Total War devs constantly try to focus so much on campaign map when they have no chance to really compete with Paradox and in turn neglecting their battles. And I, I, I kind of like that about Total War in theory. I've got to play more. I played a bit of um, Rome. That was the one I played. Um, I thought it was good fun. So, a yellow key card back up here through the little tiny, tiny little door. Also, there was this, which, yeah, didn't go anywhere. Okay, cool. Rome was peak. Yeah, okay. Good to, good to know that I played the good one. What a, what a strange little corner. I hate these turrets. How, how many times have I mentioned I hate the turrets in this game? A lot of the enemies in this game are just annoying though, I tell ya. I have no like I remember when I saw the intro and how it really broke my mind. Oh yeah, because it's the cool like full motion video. It's great. This is indeed some level design. And they did respawn enemies. I already found it cool when the stronghold, sorry, in stronghold, the archers could stand on the walls compared to Age of Empires 2. Oh yeah, they can, yeah. Room for all the enemies. Enemies, enemies, and not a drop to drink. What is this? What's going on here? Does that lower the door? Yeah, okay. Ooh. 
mini boss. That's the second time they've done this where they have like two two doors next to each other, but then like just tiny little cutout. That is what Total War was about. Oh, boom! Hundreds of soldiers. Hundreds of soldiers is yeah. That was the coolest part when when yeah I played it. It was just like ooh, you know. I like big enemy counts and it felt like it in that game. It felt very deserved. Uh. Almost. Oh, we'll get there. We'll get there. Holy God. See you in hell. Well, that's quite straightforward of a level, ain't it? Campaign map always was a means to get you to the good part of the battles, and also randomize what battles you have to fight. Ruby. Oh, I'm on the I'm on hurting floor already. Look at the <laughs> Come on guys, come on. This used to be a fun house, but now it's filled with evil clowns. Uh, In-depth Empire expansion is what the Paradox games are about. Heck, they even have different series with different focus on different times in history, like Euro Europa Universalis. Oh my gosh, that one's a mouthful for me. Um, Mount Lion, etc. Victoria. Oh, that's why the ceiling's moving. Holy shit. That's just cruel, man. Okay, bathroom area. Uh, I just peed on this guy. Key card. That's the secret exit. I don't have to play the level. I can just leave the level now. Ooh, let's not go that way, actually. Ooh, ooh. And we're doing this floor thing again. But that's what that's one thing I kinda like about like all these different um especially like RTS games, just because I don't know what sets them apart. Um Certainly, if I play them, I can tell you, like, oh, you know, like, this is, you know, different to that, and so on. Um, but to me, on the surface, it's like, I see Total War, I, I just go, oh, you know, it's that game with the two modes. And, uh, what? Mm, mm, mm. I'm gonna go right this time. Oh, that's this room. No, it's not. Oh, no, it's, it's, it's the crushing ceiling the other way. Uh... I think we we know the gimmick of this level, um, and I guess that kind of sums up Duke Zone 2 isn't it? in a nutshell, isn't it? These levels are ideas, but they're certainly like a bit too wacky to stitch together and call it like a proper expansion. I think someone just went, oh, what are all the cool build engine features they can use today? And they, they decided spawn enemies was the answer. Oh my goodness. Wow. Total War games failed to make interesting battles. They were originally great, but they got dumbed down too much. I hate it when, yeah, when franchises dumb down. Especially because it's like when there are recurring players, you know, they are gonna know what previous games are like. Here's me ripping into Mario Wonder. I enjoyed it, despite the fact I've played a lot of 2D Marios. That's what your game should be about. Is that a is that a pit? Nice. Okay, cool. I'm glad we've established that. Okay, what's going on in here? I've just got to know how to dodge through these yet. Funnily enough, even still, real-world tactics work. Okay, we're in. We're through. And now we have a key card that's... Can you even get that? I didn't save. Whoops. And the floor is moving, and the floor is moving, and I'm going all over the place. Oh boy, death has got squish squish. I'm trying, I'm, is there a way to get in there? Do we need the, I don't have steroids. I don't think there's a way to get in there. Nah, it's, it's way too tight. I'm barely able to even like turn around a little and make the distance to get back. Oh, I'm back out here. Okay, well, key card. got this crushing ceiling, but at least I'm on the right side of it now, because that just leads back here. I've got a yellow key card though. Oh, hi there. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Oh, can you, can you not get crushed, you guys? They're in it. They are definitely in it. Oh my gosh. They're, oh my gosh. 
<laughs> we're not getting hit three times. <laughs> Don't count, Kazis. Jeez. Jeez. Because oh. they're still going, these guys. That's what's happening here. Good, are we done? No one on the outside? No, we got another Octobrain out there. Hold on, let's let's lure him out. I actually have a store. And still get hit by more kamikazes. Uh, I, that is so strange that they don't get crushed yet. You have a level designed around this happening. And it doesn't happen. Also, I picked up a blue key card. It was not the other blue key card, I guess. Yep, he's gone. Alright, where was the... <laughs> Is that a mirror? Is that a mirror? Just the... Oh my gosh. <laughs> Very confused here. Sitting out to up there. Okay, so that means I'll just need to go clockwise around here again. What a strange gimmicky level. And obviously as well, we have the toilet exit. So yeah, that's that's the end. Just jump to the toilet exit then. Uh, where was the toilet? Uh, where was the toilet exit? It was out. This way and to that direction. Was it? No. No, because that was up there. Ah. We'll find it again, don't worry. Must have been past the red door then. Yeah, yeah, I can see it on the map. Ugh. There are only two levels left. This, this third episode, it's been lot shorter. Dying time. I do that all the time. <clears throat> this kind of looks like the same level again, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, long story short with Jonathan Blow, I hope the best for him and in general all indie studios you know, in his vein, but uh, certainly there's a part of me that's like, I don't like how long game dev takes. A lot of people are very willing to take a very, very long time, but it's like, you need to just push your ideas out. If you're sitting on it for too long, you gotta have a backup plan, you gotta have a backup product. You can't, I mean, I know, you know, I gotta release something because I gotta release something, but people are willing to play or write stuff, and people are willing to play stuff if it's got your name on it, but you gotta ship out stuff, and you gotta finish things. Like, work to it, finish it. This is, oh boy. I, I hope you appreciate all these uh, kinds of gimmick levels, I swear. Oh boy, we are going. I'll try and get him. I wish I got them all in one go, but oh well. Um, yeah, I, I still also have this like opinion about like big AAA games. There's lots of games coming out recently where it's like they're competing against like Overwatch. It's like you made this game to. I like how it's all green because I went in the green side. Um, but it's like you had your game in development for so long that you thought Overwatch was still relevant, and now it's like we are well past that point. Another stream where I get to rip on Overwatch. I'm sorry. Overwatch is a fun punching bag game, though. Uh, let's switch it off. It's the B. Oh, hi. What? 
He was not there before. He was not there. Let's see if I can wander around here. There we go. Whoop. Whoop. There we go. Very nice. Something on the other side or no? Are all these just leading to this? Oh, because it's a different, it's, it's not the same. Hail to the king, baby. I'm gonna get medieval on your asses. Is this a bonus Ooh. room or are they just gonna spawn a bunch of enemies right behind me? No, it's just the bonus. Hmm. Okay, up we go. Certainly a bunch of enemies, but you know what? I'll accept this one a little more. It's so strange though, because like, I think there was an art to level design back then. I'm not too sure if these guys uh, are cut from the same cloth. It's just, these are, these are levels. Uh, definitely, if you play them, you can beat them, that kind of stuff, but they don't, they, they are not at all the same kind of vein of levels. I, I think there are a lot of them are too abstract. Uh, to fit in with the Duke theme, um, and they're all generally quite disconnected, you know, they're all just kind of doing their own things or that kind of stuff. They feel a bit, um, I'm gonna say Rise of the Triad, you know what I mean? Like that kind of like abstract. Also, whoa, the freeze thrower. It's in this, it's in this game. Okay, oh, C, is that a, is that a wall? Okay, cool. Cool, we've got a wall here. Oh boy. This is the dying time, is this where, where it comes in? <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, I would've been a bit stuffed otherwise. I got a jetpack now, but I feel like it's uh, maybe a bit too late. I don't know. Oh. I I really do hate just the enemies spawning back in in early areas. It doesn't feel like the flow is quite deserved. Okay, hold on. So there's that. Does this just go the same both sides? It does. Okay, cool. This is a door to D, but that doesn't open up. So I'll just wander back to A, I guess. And we've also got this up here, which... It's interesting, but sure. Come get some. Scuba gear. And let's just drop down to the same kind of area. You go through a tunnel, and you're up. Into a, another room where we opened B, and then we wandered back up to the top. Okay. So really, this is the only lift. And I'm just constantly getting turned around by the same lift. And D is not open. Why? It's not open this way. Well, I guess we'll just check back up again. Hmm. So we're back up here. That's what B opened. There's a switch for C. So we'll probably just look for a door that says C, but it wasn't up here. <clears throat> well, what are we looking at through the, through the cameras? A wall. I can barely see anything. The C, the B, the D, A, C. Okay, it's a door somewhere on the top. At least I can gauge that from there. There you go. I'm finally using the cameras <laughs> instead of just understanding the level design off the top of my head. There we go. Yeah, yeah, this makes more sense. Oh, we brought the conveyor belts back. Excuse me, you're meant to go the right way on the conveyor belts. Yeah, but no, yeah, this has been, um, it's been alright. It's definitely, uh, 
me going chronologically through the releases is, is going to be a bit eye-opening as well, because you're going to see, like, you know, the level design quality just goes, like, all over the place. Some people know it, some people don't. Once you get to 2016, it's like, yeah, people know it. Um, but I guess I'm like the, I'm stuck on arbitrary wall again. <laughs> Come get some. Uh, you can see the ground kind of flickering out when I, like, turn it. Yeah, ugh. Ugh, what's going on there? <clears throat> All this atomic health. Well, that's a fun sound, ain't it? Um... Like, I open... Oh, I closed the door. <laughs> that's what it is, yeah. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of... Mm, there's a lot of weirdness. A lot of oddities. Uh, this... Level pack. Um... Certainly, I at least appreciate its uh, ship with the 3D Realms Anthology version, because it's not in the uh, the Megaton edition, the Devolver version. They didn't even care. Um, uh, but also, yeah, again, very importantly, you technically can't buy this anymore. Uh, I bought it back in the day um, when the 3D Realms Anthology was available, but it's such a shame that that's not available anymore, because also, by the way, this is not at all what the floor is facing. <laughs> I don't um, but, uh, yeah, it's such a shame, because it's like, you know, these are indeed levels, and were things released, and now it's just like, ah, Gearbox is just saying, nah, you can't play it. Um, and the main reason why, I think, is because they view the content of the other expansions to be, um, problematic, I think is the term. Uh, certainly there is some wild depictions of, uh, oh, you can tell exactly where this is going. Oh my gosh, like, what is that? What is going on here? There you go. We're good. I'm not dealing with the guys behind me. We're good. We're good. I got him. Um, yeah, so like the, the other expansions, you're gonna see some, uh, some very, very, uh, hilarious material. Um, nowhere to run, by the way. We are at to the, up to the final level. The absolute final level of Duke Tone. And we've done all the, um, bonus levels as well. So, I'm kind of glad that it's not too hard to find them. But I'm also kind of shocked that they're that kind of straightforward to find. This is, uh, a scenario and a half, ain't it? We added some trip mines everywhere just to make it more fun. <laughs> it's like, what is with all these barrels? There's a bit of uh, non-Euclidean going on here. There yeah, you can you can see he was facing the other way. He was like, oh, what am I doing here? But uh, yeah, I mean, there's certainly some cool-ish ideas in the levels, but um. As a whole experience, I don't know if it adds quite up. Obviously as well, if you bought this at the time, you would have gotten those uh, 500 custom levels alongside this. Um, again, maybe a mixed quality. Some, some of them maybe you might like a bit. But, uh, wow, we've just got a lot of, like, weird little pathways that lead up into the central room. That seems to be the, the level design we've got going on. It's weird as well, because they had city levels. They actually had, like, some, you know, like, flows of some of the earlier levels, and now it's just, like... You know, <clears throat> try and find a blue keycard, I guess. Somewhere. And they drew a face again. They just, they drew a face again. Uh, I feel like there's something in that one triangle room that glitches out every time I walk in places. Oh, that's why it's... <laughs> oh, okay, I'm just gonna grab that. Some of these uh, tripwires as well, it's like... You could probably walk in them. And it won't like... Well, it, it'll set them off, but it'll also be on the... Um, you know, way too far away from the, uh, trip mine to actually, like, take the damage. 
Okay, come on, that's enemy spawning behind me. Ding, ding, ding. Stop doing that game. This is such a big problem of that happening, I'll tell you. And we are now back in the below room, but now I can activate the switch. Oh, which closes the door on me. Okay. It's a fun sound effect. Why can I activate that? I'm not really sure why I could activate that, but. Oh, hi. Let's just round them up. What a odd thing to happen, but okay, sure, yeah. Um, I feel like at some point we should have all these enemies spawn. Yeah, okay, there we go. In particular... Is that... Yeah, okay, that's the big guy. That's the big laddie. I should be able to bait all these guys into hitting him a bit. He's just gonna be stuck in his. Uh, oh my gosh! He's gonna be stuck in his little room, though, isn't he? Again, like the first boss. Uh, you intend to finish this state? This is yeah. This is the last level, and then we'll be done for Duke Zone. Next week's gonna be uh, what are we doing? Duke out in DC. Uh, we're gonna do uh, the Christmas one the week after. Uh, Life's a beach the week after that, and then the twentieth. Anniversary levels the week after that, so uh, four more weeks after this. All of those are short enough that I think they'll definitely be done in one stream. So, yeah, he's definitely just chilling. Though. We're not. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to get past with uh, these enemies in the way. We're good. I think we're good actually. Okay. Yeah, he's just chilling in there. Which is not really how I like fighting him. I prefer the circle strafe, because otherwise then you're crossing in front of his shots so that he's sort of generally making. It's just kind of annoying. Uh, let's switch to the Devastator for a bit. Well, we should be good to take him out. Overall, though, people who say whether the, the people who say that the difficulty is all over the place, I think it is mostly just because uh, all the difficulty levels are the same. I think that I think that might just be the reason. Because once I got back into it, it wasn't that bad. It didn't feel that bad, but um, it certainly was a, a bit challenging. And uh, yeah, no, the levels were a bit all over the place. I don't know. My name's Duke Nukem. After a few days of R and R. Oh, we're gonna have to hear this again, aren't we? Aw, come back to bed. We're gonna have to hear this again. Oh boy. No. This is worth it. This is worth it every time, apparently. Who did the voice for Mo Wang again? The laughs reminding me a bit too much. But yeah, no, that's Duke Zone Two. Duke Zone One. It's not original levels. Rocket. It's fine. You don't need to <laughs> don't need to worry about it. So that's that. There we go. So, anyways, with that, I would like to thank you all so very very much for watching. If you enjoyed this or you didn't enjoy this, whatever, uh, you can follow on Twitch where I stream at 8:30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard every Monday. I was like, which day of the week are we on? Every Monday. And uh, yeah, if you missed part of this, you'll have the VOD on YouTube pretty soon. Um, I'm switching my rendering this week to using, I'm starting to use DaVinci Resolve, as, or as I endearingly keep saying, DaVinci Resolve. Um, I've, I've been using Premiere for a long time, but Premiere just, uh, the renderer crashes, Adobe Media Encoder crashes all the time. Also scrubbing in Premiere is really slow compared to just some early testing of uh, DaVinci Resolve, so we'll see how it goes. To you on YouTube, it probably looks the exact same. Uh, and if you're on Twitch, I'm not using it yet. I'm just streaming through OBS, so. Uh, if you want to see me say silly things as well, I'm not on Twitter. You go on the Fetty at uh, m.bnl.com. I'm there. Say hi. Or don't say hi. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, no. Peace out. Stay safe. Eat your greens. Don't stay up too late like I have. 
And, uh... Don't get trapped in the metro tunnel at Sydney on the new metro. It's <laughs> that, that happened in the testing and then it took them a bit longer to get approved. Oh boy. So, see ya fellas.